Hey kids, it's time to get some SML podcast all up in that. No, Eternal Rahaje just subbed for 21 months. Rahage. Eternal Rahaje. Why would you go and do that? I like <laughs> bad decisions. We get all these people who sub, but does anybody ever dom? No. No. I, I do. But that's <laughs> completely different. That's I how we're opening the show. So what's up, everybody? <laughs> this is the <laughs> SML <I> podcast. <laughs> We're I'm really your host, open. Joe. Uh, joining as usual, Cole, how are you doing? I am good. Just good? Yeah, I'm fine. The cats are carrying on, and I'm sending number one out to go stop them. Nice. So, yeah. Ask somebody else how they're doing. I have noise in the background. <laughs> Aki and Jacob are here. How are you two doing? Well, I mean, the kids are in bed now, so, you know, that's better. And then you won't believe what happened afterwards. What you took a giant mess of poop. I did. <laughs> I did. So, you See, know. Too much fucking fiber. I told you. Just too no, much. I, I was hoping that was going to be clickbait and he was going to be like, no, I'm constipated. And now I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> not with my diet. I'm not. No, <laughs> no told sir. You too much fiber. I told you. That, oh, hey, if I'm, I'm not constipated, that's just the right amount of fiber then. Uh. I think you go too damn much. We this show is to... awful. This show is. Just... <laughs> you yeah. could say it's and shitty. I blame him. Yeah, yeah. You can say this show is shitty. I've been saying it for Since seven the day and one. Half years. <laughs> and this is all my... is shitty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's someone mm, might I, listen. I always thought it was small, medium, large originally. Originally, it was. Yeah. Okay, I thought so. I thought I heard that in one of the first couple of episodes, but I wasn't sure anymore because yeah, it's been the, a long time. And it's also really, do you really want to go back and listen to those? Like, <laughs> like I, I was not the current episode. No. I mean, I started around like 350 ish. I went back and I started listening to the old ones. You poor soul. Poor soul. Yeah. I think I got to one that was like four hours long and I was just like, fuck this. <laughs> and I stopped. I'm guessing that was our e or, uh, our MAGFest episode. That It was a while ago. I have no idea. But it was, I was just like, oh, these are all like in, some of them were less than an hour even, if I'm remembering correctly. Originally. Yeah, in the in the early days, we didn't do reviews, which is what the bulk of these shows are anymore. Yeah, you just talked about a lot of gibberish, and I was fine with that. And then you got to a four-hour one. I was like, I no, <laughs> just no. To be I'm fair, that that this. first four-hour show from Magfest, was, I thought was really good because it was like a half-hour segment, and then some music, and then a half-hour segment, and then some music. It really was kind of like an an early groundwork of what the show would kind of turn into. Uh, where so I, that's where it went to shit. Okay. Oh no, it was at shit since day one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it just got worse. The day. <laughs> but yeah, it, the, well, the show no, did start off as small, worse. medium, large. Just, I wouldn't say it got worse. It's just worse, you know, in a different direction. <laughs> that still makes it worse, though. You did. We, we didn't go up or down. We just went sideways a whole lot. <laughs> Ah, kind of like my weight. All right, cool. <laughs> oh, how are things on your end? I'm good. You sure? Mm-hmm. Or is there a bunch of noise in the background still? No, we're good. Thank you. <laughs> we had to separate the cats. <laughs> what? They decided- why, why do you sound so suspicious about all this stuff? Because <laughs> she is. Oh, what are talking about? No, <laughs> like, no we had to no, separate the cats tonight. <laughs> They're, they're being assholes to each other. Apparently, we run out of catnip. Now they don't like each other anymore. Nice. <laughs> they're, they're not high, so they realize they're in each other's spaces, and they're pretty pissed about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, aren't 
all cats always kind of assholes. It's kind of like yes. what defines them as a cat. You know, in a lot of situations, my three do really well together. Like they, they generally like have their spaces. Gabe has his place that he likes to sleep. Cass has his place that he likes to sleep. Raven mostly stays outside, but when he comes inside, he's got his places. But sometimes, sometimes the moon tilts just right and everybody hates each other. <laughs> and you just, I don't understand it. <laughs> See, at times like that, you should put them in a metal cage and then put them in a little bit of water. So that they're more pe- that they're all pissed off on the same source instead of each other. Aki, yes, that's animal abuse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know about that, but oh that's no, the the true abuse, abuse will be when you open the though. cage and they scratch the shit out of you for what you did to them. <laughs> exactly, they're all unified in their hatred of one specific thing instead of each other. It's fun. Yeah. Then they all hate you instead. Yeah, and I would works. just assume like. Put them in different rooms. <laughs> it's safer <laughs> and less abusive. Hey, they probably need baths anyways. It's fine. No bath. Cat. I mean, you can give cats baths. Not yeah. fun. You just I, use dry but, shampoo. My family's always given all our pets baths. From Please mouth don't tell me you've ever bathed a bunny, because that would be really bad. Don't bath bunnies. We've ne- <laughs> I've never had a bunny. Okay. Uh, don't bath chinchillas either. I there are. Pets I, I don't know if make. I've ever even seen a chinchilla. I've only, I've heard the name. I don't think I've actually seen one ever in my life. What the fuck two. is this show like? What is this direction <laughs> we're going in tonight? Chinchilla. It's always me and Cole. There, <laughs> there is so together, so much to shit. talk about tonight, and you're like, let's talk <laughs> about chinchillas and bathing. But have you ever seen a, fucking like, animals and rabbits? A chinchilla, and then just be like. That is the most magnificent beast you will ever pet in your life. I don't. I don't know. Minks it's exist, true. and so do silver foxes, and Look, those are both. Trust animals, me, yeah. it is. No, we don't. Well, <laughs> yeah, no, no. I know what a mink make, is. You guys make know what questionable decisions is. anyway. We've already established that that is canon. Well, yeah, I mean, podcast. we're on a podcast with you, so yeah. I, of course I mean, on top decisions. of that. We've already determined you do too. You've subbed for what? What was it? Twenty-one months as of today. Yeah. Obviously, you've made some bad mistakes too. And yours That's- are fucking ongoing. <laughs> <laughs> you've made consistent mistakes. <laughs> the same ones, even <laughs> twenty-one months worth. Insanity exactly. is doing the same thing over and over and hoping for better results. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but if it's with this podcast, what better results do you really expect? Is that what exactly. is that like watching the the game awards last night and expecting anything other than The Last of Us Part Two to win an award? I I was just like, welcome to the Sony Dick Sucking Show. It was a good segue, by the way. But it, welcome to the Sony Dick Sucking Show because that's all that the game awards was meant to be. Yeah, it, it seemed very. I don't know. Like I from from all the reviews and from what I've played, The Last of Us Part Two wasn't even like that amazing of a game. No, I watched it be played. I didn't play it obviously, and like it was fine, but I didn't get where the earth shattering aspects of it supposedly were. Like I didn't get it. Like I, I was really hoping Ghost of Tsushima like was going to I didn't. I didn't even like how the narrative played out because I was like, "Well, that was a cop out." <laughs> yeah, most but, of the know. things The Last of Us Two one I wouldn't have selected it for. There were a couple that I was like, "Okay, that that's fine, whatever." But most of them, like, no, I would have preferred this other group to get it. But eh, it is what it is. Yeah, Kotaku had a really interesting editorial uh, today about <laughs> uh, The Last of Us Two winning a uh, best direction. Yeah, I um, saw that. Yeah, that, oh, I didn't see that. Uh, pretty much, they're saying that it, any game that abuses crunch time as bad as The Last of Us Two or something like, I guess today would be like Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. If they <laughs> abuse crunch time as bad uh, as that, that they should not be up for best game direction because obviously you're not you didn't doing do a good direction job. Fan. Yeah, right. So. Yeah, but um, then you wouldn't it, it have anyone well nominated. Is the problem with that? <laughs> 
I, I, I don't maybe, know. I do, we, we see some studios like, that do shit right. Mm-hmm. And the thing is that I think there's a difference between like, yeah, like you got that last minute crunch versus like, you know, abusing it for extended months at a time, you know, uh, where you just don't see your family. You're like working all night, um, all that kind of stuff. Like, I think there's a difference um, with that. Mm. But no, but there was a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot that went on at the Game Awards. We should probably get to it because, again, like I said, there is a lot to discuss that doesn't involve chinchillas. And, uh, <laughs> or me pooping. Very yeah, true. but we can all bypass the esports stuff because who the fuck cares? I will say this. Esports need some diversification. Yeah. Yeah, it's called a trash can. That's that's the diversification it needs. It just needs to be thrown the fuck away. It is such shit. Well, we'll get there in a little bit. Let's go through what happened. We'll start with the pre-show. They started off the pre-show with the award for best score in music, which went to Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yay. As expected. Yeah. I mean, kind of hoping Doom would win. Yeah, but it, it just feels like Final Fantasy games are always going to win that. <laughs> Can, can I point something out? Microsoft owns Dune now. Dune will never win anything ever again, <laughs> no matter how good it is. Okay. That's true. I would not be shocked. Well, the sale just, hasn't gone through yet. Let's just put that out there. <laughs> it hasn't? I thought it went through a while ago. No, I they, the, it, the, it closes but... next year sometime. Mm-hmm. Oh. April. It's May, like all the like official that. shit has to go through on it. But. Yeah. Okay. It has to get, like, approved by the government and shit so that it doesn't violate antitrust and all that. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. Boring uh, legal shit. Yeah, it's literally what holds yeah. it up. But for all intents and purposes, and Microsoft tense. owns. That's what I said. Microsoft owns Doom. <laughs> and so Doom will never win anything. I don't know. Microsoft did win. You know, they, they got a win later on in the show, but... Uh, let's, let's keep on, uh, with what's going on. Uh, there was a reveal trailer for Loop Hero from Devolver, which led to a fun little sketch from our friend Don Thacker in Imagos Films. That was unexpected and really, I, it tickled me. That was a good way to open the show. It was. Then there was a trailer for a game called, I'm, I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, but Chia. Chia, uh, T C H I A. I don't remember this. It's one. very Zelda like, and it's going to be on Steam. Okay, look, I must really have good. missed that one. I think that was at the point where I was like, "Oh, the Game Awards are on," and I turned them on, and then I had to go do some shit before I could come back and actually start watching. Hmm. I didn't watch them at all, so you still did better than me. I don't think Jacob watched them either. Did you? No, I didn't. Right. How you guys suck. Hey, I, I at least went through everything with a link that, that Joe gave me that told me who won everything. So I at least did that. So I'm probably doing better than Jacob. <laughs> I mean, that bar is pretty low right there. So <laughs> Hey, I still passed it and you still failed it. So it's fine. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, best action adventure game went to The Last of Us Part 2. Shocking hey. everybody. Hey. Honestly, she flat I- out said, too, when she announced that, she was like, the winner of the best action adventure game always goes on to win game of the year. And you're like, well, no shit. <laughs> Honestly, I would have given that to Star Wars. I-, I think that was better at that, personally. But mm. Oh, well, it doesn't matter what we think. It matters what the people who paid... For the Game Awards, thank so, you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sea of Solitude is coming to the Switch in a reworked director's cut later on this winter. Uh, I have to disappear for it, a second. It seems like the director's cut is only going to be on the Switch, though. That's what it, they made it seem, yeah. And I was like, well, that sucks because I want to play it again. Give it to yeah. me again. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I, I would have done it again too. <laughs> well, maybe it'll be like six months later. It shows up on other platforms. I do hope so. I want to play it again. 
I really, really loved Sea of Solitude. Yeah, that was a cute game. It's one of them that doesn't get removed from my Xbox. Hmm. One of the very select few. It's it's another one of them. I've yet to play it. I, you guys are praising it so much. I should give it a go. It, it, it's pretty good. Uh, not It's not up everyone's tree. I don't know how much you'll like it, but I thought it was fantastic. It's, uh... Oh, I can't... Submerged. Did you play that? Yep. Joe. Yeah. Not not you. Joe. Uh it's it's got very similar vibes to Submerged. Mm. Yeah. Not full on, but there's a lot of moments where you're like, oh yeah, this feels this feels familiar. Yeah, it's because you're on a boat. <laughs> and you climb stuff. That is Captain specific. Obvious jumping yeah. in. Yeah. The obvious yeah, but that, that's really all there is that's similar between the two of them to me. That's it. Uh, they showed a trailer for a new game called Shady Part of Me, which is <laughs> that looks available so now. Good. That yeah. looks so good. I haven't seen it. Jacob, are you Was back that on now? all platforms? I am back. Yeah, I could tell. <laughs> uh, I think it's only PS4. Shady Part like of Me? A- yeah, it's I feel on- like it went on Xbox. It is on Xbox. Is it? Okay. Yes. Like 15 How bucks. How much is it? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> then there were a bunch of awards that they handed out. Best family game went to Animal Crossing New Horizons, Expected. which I thought was a well-deserved win. Yeah, I yeah. was good with that. Best community support went to Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout. Expected. Uh, it was funny because they were rattling these off and I'm sitting here and I'm like calling them out and David just turns to the side and looks at me and goes, how do you know what all these are going to be? And I'm like, I paid attention this year. <laughs> None of these are surprises or upsets. Well, then what was best debut game? Wasn't it Phantasmophobia? Phasmophobia. Yeah, there it is. Phant- Lord, Phasmophobia. Yeah. And then yeah. people were like. Wasn't that abandoned? And I was like, no, I just come out like two months ago, dumbasses. Pay attention. <laughs> See, I, I, I think uh, Carrion should have gotten that. Carrion was good, but I can understand why Phasmophobia went. And considering Phasmophobia is a one-man dev team, that's oh, that really impressive. fucking impressive. Yeah. So they, they, by all means, they deserve it. Uh, another award, Reddit's Game of the Year, ended up going to Ghost of Tsushima. A little I'm surprised by that. that. Would you say, Aki? More, I said, I'm fine with that. The more that that game wins, the happier I am. Yeah, I thought it was a pretty good win. I I, I like Ghost of Tsushima winning stuff more than Last of Us, honestly. I will yep. say, though, like I'm surprised <laughs> that Ghost of Tsushima won as much as it did. Because a lot of people seem to like... Roll through it, be like, yeah, it's pretty, and then they forgot it just as fast. Mm. And I'm like, okay. I know, I even watched somebody play it, and I still don't know shit about it other than just, like, the mental screenshots I remember (laughs) seeing. And I'm like, okay, I saw it, like, four times, and that's all I know about it. And I, I, blah, (laughs) <laughs> so I'm surprised it won what it did, but then at the same time I'm not surprised that it you know I didn't expect it to not win anything because Sony, you know, <laughs> they got a dick to suck. What can I say? Oh Lord, <clears throat> can't go accusing <laughs> shit. I can. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't, but I can. <laughs> We're blacklisted from ever partaking in the game awards now. <laughs> we were never at any hope anyway. <laughs> True. Well, uh, if you voted on Reddit, then theoretically we participated, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't Did think it, I like, voted. Five years from now, my fat ass gonna be rolling up to the game awards stage in my wheelchair and be like, fuckers. Sony sucks. <laughs> Everyone will just be like, ma'am, what how how did you get on stage? <laughs> <sighs> Anyway, Mist <laughs> VR is on Oculus Quest, available now. What is, so, it? Oh, what is it? Mist VR. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, nice. If I like I how I say VR. it one time, no reaction from anybody. I repeat the game, and then it's, ooh. Well, that's because all I heard was VR. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same. It, it's not like it cut out or anything. It was just like I. it didn't. Cat. Joe just had a dick in his mouth, much like you know. Mm-hmm. Everyone mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> how's, how's that blue dick taste? 
am not doing anything with Smurfs. A <laughs> uh, new trailer for Near Replicant was shown off, and then a new trailer for a, an interactive series called We Are OFK. Oh, I thought that yeah. looked interesting. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what that was. I was just like, okay, that's a thing. <laughs> I forgot about it until you mentioned it just now. <laughs> <laughs> then there were a bunch of esports uh, awards given out. I, I guess the only important one is esports game went to League of Legends. So congrats to yeah. them. The Ooh, rest of them, <laughs> the rest of them, I don't really care about. So I'm not going to say. Them. I- Yep. Yeah. Esports is just worthless. So yeah, well, let's move on. Uh, and then they showed off a trailer for a game called Century Age of Ashes PC, and that was the pre-show. Yay! Yay! Let's get on to oh, the God. game awards. Wait, we haven't discussed the whole thing. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Now we're getting to the game awards. Oh God! This Century game looks good, but my PC would never be able to handle that. Uh yeah, when when you say "Oh God," to we're just starting the actual game awards. Keep that in mind when y'all go on your tangents about Meh. everything. <laughs> Excuse me, our listeners are very interested on in my high fibrous diet. Thank you very much. No, they aren't. Uh, so the game awards started, and Jeff Keighley made a joke of like, "Oh, I guess we have to have another invitation sent out," which of course led to them revealing the newest member of the Smash Brothers Ultimate roster, and it is Sephiroth. Yep, babe. Okay. <laughs> Late 90s emo boys are very excited. Yeah, yeah I, I just don't care about anything that has to do with Smash. The community is so toxic, I just don't give a fuck. And then don't pay attention to the community, just play the game. That's all I do, I just... I don't. I don't worry about the toxic communities of anything. I just focus on the game and myself and my boredom, and the fact yeah. that Mister Sinister just dropped three hundred and nine biddies. George, take it away. Drop it, bit wet pancakes. Wet pancakes, indeed, George. Thank you so much, Mister Sinister, for coming in here and dropping those biddies. Good to see yeah. you hanging around. We're we're chatting Vigi Game Awards. We are chatting Smash Trying Brothers to. and Sephiroth joining Smash Brothers as you drop another uh, eighteen bits. There's eighteen more. George. Drop it, bits. Hopefully the sound effects are working because God only knows with OBS anymore. I could just. It would really be great if like we're listening to it. It's like George Oz. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the show. Carnage says they're working, so that's good. If you need me to fill in, I could do it, you know. Mr. Sinister, he's he's dead set on filling the cup, isn't he? Mm-hmm. There's 15 more biddies. Doesn't appear that way. Oh, Lord. Uh, he just doesn't want the show to continue. <laughs> so Sephiroth is joining December. So this month, okay. Sephiroth will be joining Smash Brothers Ultimate. I that thought was it was pretty cool. I, expected. I thought it was a cool video. I liked the... The, the still image of Sephiroth holding Mario up, and it looked like he was impaled on the sword. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I know what the people I were watching was watching with. They were like, "Oh my god, they killed Mario!" I was like, "No, <laughs> they didn't kill Mario." Apparently, it wouldn't have been the first time. I must have missed it before, but it's happened another time where they actually killed Mario in one of the trailers. Um, oh, I forget but- which one that was. But the Reaper got him, I think. I think it was one of the Belmonts. Hmm. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, shout out Mr. Sinister. I saw what he did. He filled the cup up and then he dropped another hundred biddies and uh, all the biddies went flying. <laughs> Very nice. Good stuff. Uh, next up was an award for the best performance. It ended up going to Laura Bailey as Abby in The Last of Us Part 2. Ooh, Twitter probably mad. <laughs> I, I'm glad that she won it for as much as I've like ragged on The Last of Us for winning everything. Um, I'm glad she won that one. She uh, she took I a would, lot of heat playing Abby. I, I would have given it to Daisuke uh, from go- the guy who from Ghost of Shushima. Sh- 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 yeah, but they did they get death threats just for playing a character in a game? Doubt it. Okay, well she did, and so she she earned her award. She should not have ever had to gone through that. 
I love watching it. It's just Mr. Sinister dropping one bit, dropping two bits, <laughs> dropping, <laughs> dropping one bit. They just keep coming slowly and steadily. I think he's just trying to level it off, get it nice and full. And then drop a big one. I don't know. I don't know what the plan is. There's okay there. I guess stopping right there and leave it there for someone, someone to come along and sub and then just obliterate it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just going to drop a couple more on top. Thank you, Mr. Sinister. Your biddies are always appreciated uh, because they end up paying for games like the next game that was revealed. Uh Oh, here they go. 200 <gasps> biddies and they all go flying. That is so fun to watch. Wow. Yeah. So I if you have no clue what we're talking the- about, you should come hang out with us on Twitch. When we do these shows live, come hang out with us, be in chat, party with us, twitch.tv slash the SML podcast. Uh, give us a follow. Hang out with us. Or don't. Yeah, or Get don't. Fucked. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, the next reveal was they finally unveiled what the initiative has been working on for Microsoft, and it is a brand new installment or reboot of Perfect Dark. Pretty big deal. Everybody, I've, I've seen so many people on, on Twitter be like, imagine owning the Perfect Dark IP and not doing anything with it. So now those people can shut the fuck up. <laughs> 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 it looks fantastic. I had no fucking clue what was going on. I've never played Perfect Dark. I don't know jack shit about it, but it looked good, and I'll probably play it because you know what? It's going to launch on Game Pass. <laughs> yes, it will. <laughs> oh, so I don't have to worry about whether or not I get to be hyped for it. I can just play it whenever it shows up. <laughs> be like, 2024 or some shit but whenever it falls i'm there (laughs) yeah it's gonna be a while that's that's the only bummer with all these things microsoft is showing off is that everything is so far away yeah and they need shit now i'll be honest yeah it was cool but i don't know i mean i've never been impressed by perfect dark like i mean i know it has plenty of fans but it's just like Like, I don't know, both entries in the series were strikeouts for me. I mean, all right, the original in 64 wasn't bad. Um, and, you know, maybe it was just because I played a lot of GoldenEye that I'm like, hmm, okay. But I don't know. It's just, yeah, Microsoft hasn't done a lot with it. But also, the entries that we have just, in my opinion, aren't that great. So, hooray for the fans, but... <laughs> I like I'm definitely not going to check it out till it's on sale or if I have game pass in four years, but I probably won't. You, you should. <clears throat> I probably just won't just spite you. Probably. I'll get game pass when my kids turn 18 <laughs> and they're out of the house and I have time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Anyway, they showed off a new trailer for uh, turtle rock studios in Warner brothers, new title back for blood. Uh, didn't they show this off a while ago when they were finally seeing some actual gameplay footage of it? Yes, I'm so excited. Ah, I cannot wait. I cannot fucking wait. I'm so excited. This is my shit. Ah, I've been giddy about this since yesterday. I can, can tell. tell. Holy <laughs> hell. I'm so giddy. <laughs> <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my like, god. total fangirl. This is the one thing about the whole show where I was like, fuck it. This, this is my shit. This is why I'm here. I don't give a fuck about anything else. This is what I'm here for. <laughs> well, it's it's going to be excited. coming out June 22nd. Way sooner than I was expecting. Yeah, it's not that not far away. Not soon enough for my liking. <laughs> they did also announce that you can um, sign up for the, the closed alpha. Yeah. And so I did that immediately. <clears throat> <laughs> did you get accepted yet? Uh, no, I have not. Oh. I don't think they've like I don't think they're passing out codes until the seventeenth. No. Oh. Yeah. So we'll have to wait. See if I get in there. If I did, I'll let you know what I'm legally allowed to tell you next month. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, something that you could talk about now if you wanted is Scavengers, which the PC closed beta. Uh, starts right now, and they opened up 50,000 slots for players to join. So if you want to check out Scavengers on PC, go check that out. What the fuck is that? 
I don't know. It's a game. <laughs> it's not back Check it out. <laughs> look it look it up. Do the homework. Uh, it's a I, pew pew. I don't play PC games. <laughs> uh, uh they showed a trailer for Hood Outlaws and Legends. Uh I think this one looks awesome. Mm-hmm. It's like Left for Dead in Robin Hood times. Yeah, I'm not mad at that. Mm. It's not not back for blood. But I'm not mad about it either, because Vermin Dad took the formula and changed it up and was super cool. So mm-hmm. I'm down to try anything, honestly. When and it, it comes, comes out to that in part. May. That is so soon. I, does it does it really come out that soon? Yeah, said pre-order to play at May seventh, three days early, May seventh. Oh shit! Yeah. Huh. Mm-hmm. Forza Horizon Four is getting free Cyberpunk car DLC. That's nice. Okay. Yeah, that's it's free. Free's free. Can't complain yeah. with that. If you can't uh, buy Cyberpunk, you can at least drive the car. In yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a game that, that driving is probably much better. I'm I'm hearing a lot of bad about Cyberpunk. Yeah. Yeah. I, I haven't played enough of it to have an opinion yet. I started it and I spent like an hour and a half in character customization. Shocking. So, yeah. How big was the dick? Even at its largest, it's not that particularly big, at least in my opinion. I know I watched Shiz make his character, and I was like, where's the rest of it? Yeah, I mean, even when you make it the biggest it gets, it's not particularly big at all. Wow, Granted, Shiz actually showed off the, the dick slider? Yeah. That's yeah, there, there, I think there's only three <laughs> options, small, default, and big. And that it's the same for boobs, too. But you also get the choice of cut or uncut. That is true. That's penis <laughs> one and penis two. Uh-huh. Or a vagina or action figure, and, you know, uh-huh. whichever. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so, anyway, an award, best ongoing game, went to No Man's Sky. This surprised the shit out of Did me. Did you ever think in the year <laughs> of our Lord 2020, we would be giving an award to No Man's Sky? No. No. <laughs> okay. Did you think that in the year of our Lord 2020, that No Man's Sky would beat out Destiny and Warzone? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I know that that game has gone above and beyond in writing its wrongs. And yeah. that it's a, a wonderful game to play. But up against those two powerhouse franchises... Somebody paid a lot for that award. <laughs> <laughs> Not all the awards were paid for, Cole. <laughs> this one definitely was. <laughs> Somebody at Activision is going, how'd they pay more than us? <laughs> oh allegedly. So that lawyers can't come after us, I said allegedly. <laughs> I don't know. The lawyers are already on their way. Jacob, you're going to deal with them, by the way. <laughs> what am I dealing with? Good for paying attention. Uh, Thank you. The Callisto Protocol was shown off. It is coming in 2022 uh, from Striking Disc Studios. It gave me a very Dead Space vibe to it. Yeah. Very much so. I am. I'm looking forward to that. I'm legitimately sad it didn't say Dead Space 4. <laughs> Uh, I think everybody was expecting it, too. (laughs) A little bit, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, They showed off more gameplay for Warhammer 40k Darktide, which is coming to PC and Xbox. I have have high hopes for that. I think it's going to be a cool game. And then a bunch more awards. Best Art Direction went to Ghost of Tsushima. Fair. Good good shit. Best Action Game. It (laughs) should have. Ori got shut out, and it is Mm. a shame. It makes me so sad, but best action game went to Hades. Mm-hmm. Best mm-hmm. VR game went to Half-Life Alex, which shocked absolutely nobody. Yeah. No, not at all. <laughs> you have to give awards to Valve when they make shit so that you might con them into making more shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They still can't count to fucking three, but maybe one day. Maybe one maybe. day. Uh, best sports racing game went to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. I know Carnage was excited about that one. Out of all of them that were listed for that, 
I, that's the only one I'd ever want to play, so I'm all for that. Dirt was Out awesome. Out of curiosity, what else was listed? I know Dirt uh, 5 was one of them. F, uh, F1 2020, FIFA 21, and NBA 2K21 okay. are the other options. I'm, I'm not into sports games, and I don't usually like racing games, so I was like, I, I'm cool with Skater. I used to play those games way back when. <laughs> I enjoyed them. So, yeah, I'm fine with it winning. There was my jam, but I'm good with Tony Hawk winning. Uh, and then most anticipated game went to Elden Ring. That was a surprise. Why? What and did I you think it would go why. for? I don't remember what the other options were now. It's been 24 hours. Yeah, and I don't. <laughs> and they're not written on this thing, so. <laughs> but I didn't expect the Elden Ring. I remember thinking it when, I, when it popped up, I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, I forgot that even existed. I was like one of the few that I got wrong. <laughs> I don't even remember what the other options were, though. That's a damn shame. I know. God, I think God of War was one of them. Uh, Breath of the Wild Two was one of them. Uh, Carnage oh, yeah. and Halo was one of them. So I, I knew Elden Ring would be big be- because it's a new From Software game. Yeah. Ah. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Uh, some more trailers. They they showed off a trailer for the game Open Roads from Fulbright. Uh, this looked like a coal game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as soon as I saw it, I just went, I'd play that. <laughs> yeah. Carnage. A little subtle this is nod. an eternal game. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> subtle nod. I was like, I'd play this shit. And then I just forgot until you said it but then like every time i see somebody mention it, i'm like mm, i play it <laughs> uh there was a latin uh was it latinx latinx yep. how do you uh, what's the the proper way to go with latinx latinx i've always Lat- just heard latinx latinx uh in gaming segment mm-hmm. so there was one of those and then a streaming segment for valorant which yay hooray hippy hippy dippy uh, and then everyone would go nuts because Pokemon Go was going to have a Wooper watch. Wait, what's a Wooper? Wooper is a Pokemon. There was just a shit lo- there you was just don't a know shit what a Wooper, Wooper is? The fuck uh. is wrong with you? You have Pokemon <laughs> kids. You should know what a Wooper is. I Exactly. I have Pokemon kids. I, as soon as I see Pokemon, my brain goes, oh, I'll switch. <laughs> it's like not knowing what a Mudkip is. There's something fucking wrong with you. Anyway, uh, there was a trailer for Disco Elysium, the final cut, coming out March 2021 on PS4 and PS5. Someone said it's apparently coming to Xbox as well. Has anyone seen any info on that? It was not on the list on the title card. (laughs) And I haven't seen anything else about it. I thought someone said it was coming to Xbox, but I don't remember. Like, I I haven't seen anything myself. If it With does, that'd be awesome. Cut? Yeah, Disco Elysium, the final cut. Well, this on MSN, it says MSN is apparently linking to Kotaku, and Kotaku says it is, <laughs> but not until summer. Mm. So PS4, PS5, PC, and Stadia in March, and Xbox Series X. I feel like, X, I feel like that's a real Switch slap that Stadia summer. gets it before Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like throw the, Stadia the, bone here and there. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but does it have to be a game that's like, you know, people actually enjoy? <laughs> True. We'll add full voice acting for every character, additional quests, and be free to everyone who's already bought the game. Yay. Awesome. Yay. Uh, they showed a new video for Dragon Age. So Dragon yes. Age is coming back. Okay. That is exciting. Enjoy. Uh, Can't wait for that. They they revealed Endless Dungeon from Amplitude in Sega, which will be hitting all platforms. That game looked pretty good. I am I'm digging what I'm seeing of that one. Uh, following that was a trailer for Crimson Desert, the new game from Pearl Abyss, the the Black Desert team. I don't know if this is an online game or not. It didn't feel like it. Uh, I didn't even realize it was from the Black Desert team. Yeah. Crimson Desert. Open world action adventure. Huh. If it's single player, I could get into that. Narrative driven single player game oh, with online go. multiplayer functionality. So yeah, 
gonna have online. Oh, I'm down. But it's got a single player narrative. It looks gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what they do. <laughs> they, make they make pretty make looking pretty games. games. Uh, next up was another award. Best narrative went to Shocker, The Last of Us Part Two. <gasps> Best. Ah! Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Overcooked All You Can Eat, the new release for PS5 and Xbox Series X and S, is getting the Swedish Chef as free DLC. <laughs> That's fantastic. That is fantastic. <laughs> I wish it was coming to, to Overcooked 1 and 2 as well. Yeah, but you know, it is what it is. Wait, yeah. what, what's happening? The Swedish Chef is coming to Overcooked. <laughs> oh, damn. That's that's a lot of fun. I like how you pay attention that much. <laughs> Sorry, I, my wife brought in a Mike's Harder lemonade, so I'm currently drinking that. Oh and no, he's going to get drunk. I'm going to get white girl wasted on the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord. Uh, Warframe is getting an Unreal Tournament weapon bundle crossover on the Epic Games Store. <laughs> so if you play Warframe on Epic yep, Games... Yeah. Uh, get some weapons. If you play it there, I'm sorry for you. Yeah. <laughs> Call of Duty Warzone is getting a Rebirth Island update. Cole, were you excited about that one, or do you just not nah. care? Eh, I'm. I don't know. I'm pretty entrenched in Cold War right now. I haven't played Warzone in like two months. <gasps> wow. <laughs> yeah. So I've been pretty, pretty entrenched in making people cry in multiplayer. Um, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of neutral on it. If everybody's like, Hey, let's play. I'll be like, okay, cool. And I'll go <laughs> play. But, <laughs> but I was just like, okay, that's, it's at least it's getting something. No. Uh, then there was a medley performance for Mario, which I thought was pretty cool. Okay. And then a video for season from scavenger studio, which is coming to the PS five. Uh, this one, it looked like a coal game. If if you were mm. if you had a PS five, yeah, maybe it'll come to Epic. <laughs> it seems like <laughs> PS five games also go to Epic, and I'll be like, okay, <laughs> I'll just pick it up there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, whatever works. Uh, yeah, I was. Go ahead. Games go ahead. for Impact Award went to Tell Me Why. Good. Tell me why. There, there were some Ain't really good. But a oh, Tell fucking me hate y'all. Ain't nothing but a mistake. <laughs> Tell me I, why. I, I would have given it to Spirit Fair. Say, say, I want it that way. Are you done? I would have given it to Spirit Fair personally. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, I haven't got to play Spirit Fair yet. Maybe in my hiatus time off, I might get a chance to finally play it. I'm uh, off. What are you talking about? We're never taking time <laughs> off. I quit. <laughs> I remember once I, when I had time off. Wishing one hand shit in the other, see ago. which fills up first. <laughs> oh, God. You just got possessed by my mother. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I really want to play Spirit Fair, but at least I, tell me why it deserves it. It's a it's a great game, great story. It deserves it. You know what else the world deserves? Apparently, is a brand a new arc game starring Vin fucking Diesel. What the fucking fuck was this? <laughs> is arc one even fucking finished yet? Yes. Okay. Now look, I I'm so tired of this gag of people saying, "Oh, arc one's not even done." No, it's done. It's been. The Isn't it still in early access, though? No, it's been out for like three years. It has? In early access, man. Yeah. Oh, see, I thought it was still early access. So it's like, is this done yet? It has like okay. six DLCs. <laughs> oh, is wow. out of early access mode? Well, she already said yes. <laughs> I know, but I, she, I don't know. I'm looking it up. Yeah, only half the DLC was released during out early access. Only half of it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, Arc 2 is a game that is happening, and it stars Vin Diesel. And from hey. what I'm seeing online, this is apparently an Xbox exclusive. 
Can Ooh. I be like honest about where my tra- train of thought was during this trailer? Yes. I was like, why the fuck are we getting another Vin Diesel game? Didn't we learn our lesson from Fast and Furious Crossroads? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, but at least he looks better in this one than he did in Fast and Furious Crossroads. So at least I can concede that, but I still don't particularly want Vin Diesel in my game. Yeah, but did he I actually do. make that, though? I mean, I thought the last game that he made was uh, Chronicles of Riddick Assault on Athena. And I have not. No, one. his voice was in. His voice was in Crossroads. Yeah, but yeah, voice I don't mean that he was involved in the creative. I don't, dis- I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I just know that I don't need Vin Diesel in in a game. I'm I mean, he's a good looking sack of man. Um, <laughs> Let's put that out there. As far as men go, yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah, I don't need Vin Diesel in my game. Joe, now, here's the thing. Everything else about the game looks fucking glorious, and I was like, why does this have to look so good? And then they plaster Vin Diesel in it. Okay, he also it's awesome. Looks good. Okay, and then I saw the dinosaur, and then I said, please don't let this be Ark. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want Vin Diesel in Ark. <laughs> and then and my he's not goes, in Ark, it's Ark too. Listen, listen, and then my brain goes, oh, but the dinosaur looks so good, and I really want Ark too. Okay, <laughs> and then my brain goes, but that's Vin Diesel, you don't want this Ark too. <laughs> and I am going back and forth with myself in my head for a good 30, 40 seconds. Like, do I even want this game? Yes. Well, it doesn't matter because you're fucking getting it. (laughs) I guess so. Right. But at the same time, like my whole head was just back and forth. I I I had a full on tug of war between my left brain and my right brain. And I'm still suffering the headache from it. (laughs) See, I just learned not to think. Really, really thought everything about this world in this trailer looks so fucking cool. I do not need a Vin Diesel story in my I arc. <laughs> hey, maybe it'll turn out good. I'd be we'll fine see. with Vin Diesel and everything. I love him. He's fantastic. I showed, I called Ashley and I'm like, Ashley, you've got to see this. And she comes in. She's like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> she loves Vin Diesel. I, just, I kept waiting for the dinosaur to eat him and just for it to be a marketing stunt. And I'm so disappointed. <laughs> nope, because he's also going to be a voice in Ark, the animated series, which is coming in 2022. They can have that. I don't ever care about spinoff shit. The only <laughs> spinoff thing I've ever paid any attention to was I read the the Division book spinoff, and that was it. Yay. Yep. So any, any of the rest of the stuff, I'm just like, yep, not the game. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they showed off some gameplay of Fall Guys Winter Wonderland update, which is going to be coming later on this month for Season 3. Mm-hmm. Uh, still no word on any other platforms for Fall Guys. I'm sure it's going to be a year exclusive, but fingers crossed we hear something soon. <laughs> ah. Odyssey Elite Dangerous is going to be an on-foot expansion coming early 2021. That'll be interesting to see Elite Dangerous get on foot. Okay. I don't, yeah. I was about to say, I don't know shit about Elite Dangerous, but yeah, I do. I blacked out on that one there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a new gameplay video for Outriders from People Can Fly in Square Enix. Uh-huh. Uh, a new award for best multiplayer game went to Among Us. The devs were so sweet. Love their little hearts. They were so excited that they won. Isn't that game like a few years old now? Yes. Mm -hmm. And it it wasn't until the pandemic that it took off. Okay, but if shouldn't this have been for like games released within like the last year? You'd think, but no. Yeah, I don't know what the (laughs) qualification is that it was able to be up for awards despite being a few years old. I don't I wonder if I wonder if it's because initially it only had like local multiplayer and stuff like that. I and now know. it's got full on online and multiple maps. And so therefore, I think they just wanted there. Among Us to win. So they were like, let's put that in there because I mean, that would 100 percent win if we do. So here we go. It's it's what, like a little four man dev team two two dudes, two chicks just making a little game. And so and more power them. to them. They deserve it. Yeah, they. I'm always happy to see small teams win. Doesn't no. happen enough. 
Uh, back to the trailers as they showed off Evil Dead the Game coming 2021 to all platforms from Saber Interactive and Boss Team Games. So, Evil Dead. <laughs> okay. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah. I'd right play now. it. It looks pretty yeah. good. It looks like another Left 4 Dead style game. Yeah. 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 And I, I'm for that. I, I like that. Just makes you wonder, like, who the other characters are going to be. Like, no one's going to not want to be Bruce Campbell. Well, I'm wondering if maybe they'll include the girl from the reboot. Oh, maybe. Or maybe they'll like they'll have a <laughs> character from Ash vs. Evil Dead. Or that was the show. That was that was what the show was called, right? I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, after that was a trailer for Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection which is hitting the Switch February 25th. It's a, an all-new version of Ghosts and Goblins, all prettied up and uh, modernified. I believe it's a whole new game. It's not just a, a remake of the original. I think it's a whole new game. I think... I'm not sure. I hope it hits more platforms. I hope it has some accessibility features. Is it, is it Ungodly Hard still? <laughs> oh, no, it's going to be Ungodly Hard. You're fucked. Shh. I remember beating it as a kid, but as an adult, I don't think I can do it. No. So. Uh, more hard games from Capcom as Capcom Arcade Stadium will be coming February 2021 to the Switch. Uh, it will feature up to 32 arcade titles. I believe they're giving away 1943 for free. And then you can buy additional packs of games from there. Okay. So I cool. hope that also comes to more platforms because I love my arcade collections. Yeah. And I would buy the fuck out of all of that on Xbox. <laughs> yep. Uh, a couple more awards. Best indie game shockingly went to Hades. Well, I'm good with that. Yeah, yeah, that's I, don't, fine. I don't think anyone else expected anything different from that. Uh, best audio design went to The Last of Us Part 2, which, Ugh, okay. Meh. Uh, best yeah. role playing game went to Final Fantasy VII Remake. I was really hoping Wasteland Three would pull out the win on that one and just like shock everybody. You you knew it wasn't going to happen. Oh, I know. Okay. I would have given just, it to just first making sure that like you didn't genuinely have hope for that. Like it was. Oh, no, not at all. It was wishful thinking. Yeah. <sighs> uh, best sim or strategy game went to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Well deserved. That game is a, a monster. Yeah. Literally, it's what, like 170 gigs, something like that? Mm-hmm. Oh, fuck. It's what ridiculous. was it that they said if you got it physical, it was on like 10 discs? Yeah. <laughs> ridiculous. Oh, my God. Uh, player's Voice game went to Ghost of Tsushima. And then Best Fighting Game went to Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate. Mortal mm-hmm. Kombat. Uh, yeah. I'm always down for Mortal Kombat to win. <laughs> uh, we talked about Microsoft Flight Sim. They confirmed it's coming to Xbox in the summer of 2021. Nice. nice. Yeah. No, I I wouldn't be shocked if they dropped the Xbox One version and just go with the Series X and S. Yeah, most I likely. I very sincerely doubt the Xbox One can run it. Yeah. I'm Not like- without some serious um, <laughs> concessions. <pixelation>. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Concession sounds like they're sure. Yeah. Uh, they showed <laughs> off a trailer for the game Returnal, new game from Housemark, that which is good. amazingly you're gonna you're gonna shit yourselves when you hear this, but a Housemark game is coming to a PlayStation console, believe it or not. <sighs> yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, coming to PS5 March 19th, so that one's right around the corner. Okay, yeah, I would love to play that, but. PlayStation. Nope. Tell Housemark to to fucking release something on Xbox. <laughs> I would love to see it too, but that just it looks so pretty. I yeah. hope I oh. Speaking of games, right around the corner, Super Meat Boy Forever is actually releasing December twenty third on the Epic Game Store. Yeah, yeah. more rage games. Oh, so it's happening. Uh, after that was a video for Joseph Fair's new game. It takes two. Which is this coming out so March twenty sixth. It does. It looks fantastic. They're this taking the, the um. This is the, an adaptation of the Mary Kate and Ashley movie, right? Obviously, yes. Nice. <laughs> they're they're I, taking. You know, I've been saying for years that movie Jacob, deserves a video. <laughs> shut up, Jacob. Uh, 
they're they're taking the same approach with it takes two that they took with a way out, and that if you buy a copy, you get a copy for a friend, mm-hmm. which is fantastic. I love that they do that. Yeah, that's pretty I, awesome. I'm looking forward to this. This is cute looking. Anything else on that one? It's no? cute. That's that's it. <laughs> All right. Next up, an award for the innovation in 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 uh yeah innovation in inaccessibility. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That would be such a shitty award. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically all the rest of gaming. We put thumbtacks on the controller. Oh, well, this is fucking hard to play. <laughs> that way, when you bleed in the game, you bleed in real life. <laughs> anyway, Innovation in Accessibility Award. Uh, it went to The Last of Us Part 2. Cole, what do you think they- of that one? <sighs> Last of Us did have some... Have- some good accessibility options. I just don't know that it was award worthy. Like I've seen so many other games have so many more options, you know? No. Or better implemented ones. Out of the games I listed, don't. I think it was the best one, though. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I th- I think even Valhalla had some better ones than Last of Us, but Really? Yeah. See, for hmm. me, I, I thought The Last of Us Part Two. it was, out of all of them, I thought it was the best for that. I mean, maybe maybe they have some that I'm not aware of that I just didn't, you know, I'm not taking into consideration because, you know, I don't play Sony games, but no. <laughs> maybe there's something I don't know of, but Valhalla would have taken it from my standpoint. And even still, I Valhalla wasn't as good as some other games have been. Like, um, even just under Ubisoft's umbrella, The Division 2 did better than Valhalla, you know? Like, they keep getting better, but they also keep losing things in the process. Because people complain. Like, The Division 2 automatically started with narration on, right? Which... Fuck it, all games should do that. It, it, it yeah. just should. Okay? Um, making somebody who is visually impaired go find somebody to come help them navigate the menu to turn on the generation is fucking stupid. Um, but people bitched about it. Ah, I don't want a computer voice talking at me the moment I load up the vision. It takes me out of the game. Ruins the experience. And then, so they stopped doing that in games. And it's like, that was something people needed. And if you can't hear, you just need to shut the fuck up and deal with it because there are people who can't. No. You know? But eh, you're, you're going to run into that a, a lot. I, and I don't know what the right answer for how to deal with it is. But accessibility should always take the lead in development. That's my opinion. Everybody else can suck it. <laughs> All right. After that was the next one? <laughs> a trailer for Elder Scrolls Online Gates of Oblivion, which is coming 2021. Uh, and then it was a whooper watch, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, yeah. Those things. Pokemon Go. All right, are you talking about an actual watch or? <clears throat> no, 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 a little whooper. Watch. Like, if you have or Pokemon whoopers. Go, you load up the game, and there would be whoopers. And it flooded, yeah, it flooded oh, okay. with whoopers. Like, I was by, um, I was actually out by a Starbucks when that happened, and all of a sudden there was like 20 of them surrounded, <laughs> uh, surrounding the damn Starbucks, and I was just like, Jesus. I, Jesus like, Christ, they're coming for me. <laughs> well, it's just like, first off, they're useless. <laughs> <laughs> but they're cute. Uh, yeah, cute doesn't really help you in the battlefield. But anyway, um, <laughs> but it's just like, so I'm like looking at them, and it was, they're like, I don't know if there's shiny whoopers in the game, but like, there weren't, and so it's just like, Okay, I'll catch like the two strongest one, and the rest I'm just sending off to the professor. Like I don't care. So I mean, I caught a bunch, but I said there was supposed to be shinies. Mm-hmm. I never got. I didn't get any. Uh, so sucks for you. You had shit luck. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, it also it also may have been where I was located because I know uh, I have better luck getting shinies like in actual like. Uh, like Pokemon, like near Pokemon gyms and stuff like that. And the Starbucks is just like a little crappy Pokestop. So we're maybe. spending way too much time talking about whoopers. Uh, best mobile game went to Among Us. Good. <laughs> they were so excited. <laughs> whoopers. 
Uh, Monster Hunter Rise was uh, shown off for the Nintendo Switch, which is coming out March 26th with a demo coming in January. And that was followed up by a performance by Eddie Vedder from The Last of Us Part 2. Okay. Shocking that The Last of Us Part 2 would get some love on this show, huh? Imagine. A new game called Evil West was shown off from Flying Wild Hog in Focus Home Interactive. Coming out March, tw- or not March, it's just coming out in 2021 for Xbox, PS4, and 5, and PC. A uh, new trailer for Scarlet Nexus coming out summer 2021. And then a new airship airship map is coming early 2021 to Among Us. Yeah. So that's more, more Among Us fun for people. Uh, content creator of the year went to Valkray, whoever the hell that is. Mm, she's a, yeah. I believe she's a YouTube streamer. Yeah, Oddly I didn't enough. know any of the people that were that were listed. I didn't know any of them. <laughs> I I couldn't tolerate her based on her victory speech, where she was just like airheaded, ditzy. I don't know if it was an act or if it's just how she is, but it was not the kind of personality I would watch. Yeah, but not hey, my cup whatever. of tea. To each his own. Yeah. Uh, the Fortnite kids are going to have fun because Master Chief is joining Fortnite. Yippee. Oh. Holy hell. Master Chief is joining Fortnite and also joining Fortnite later, I believe next year, Daryl and Michonne from The Walking Dead. <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, fucking what? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. And then it was the interesting part. I was excited here. The Game Pass sizzle reel. This they, was nice. They announced a bunch of new games coming to Game Pass. On December 15th, we are getting Skyrim. Mm-hmm. So now you could play your Skyrim on on everything. Mm-hmm. Literally everything ever. Uh, a couple more games that were just announced as coming to Game Pass, but no dates were announced. Were Neoverse, Killer Queen Black, Cyber Shadow, uh, Among Us is coming soon to PC, The Medium is coming in January, also coming in January, on January 28th, the Yakuza Remastered Collection of Yakuza 3, 4, and 5. Yeah, that a, buddy. That was a Ooh. big announcement. Yeah, and then so March, 20, broke. <laughs> March 25th, Yakuza 6. I'm getting that too. I'm really excited. So, in other words, I'm going to be buying a lot of Yaku- Yakuza games. Lovely. Yeah, or yeah, you, you can are. just play them on Game Pass. Yes. I won't have Game Pass by that point. You should buy Game Pass because it's cheaper than buying four Yakuza games. Yeah, but, you know, if we buy them, that shows our support for them and makes Sega more <laughs> likely to release more of them. They still get supported when you buy th- play them on the Game Pass app. I like I like owning my English. games. <laughs> anyway, it, then there was another Wooper watch, eh. which you know, uh, there was a trailer for Light uh, Ruined King: A League of Legends story. Looks pretty cool. I'm I'm yeah. waiting to see more in, on that. And then uh, Keanu Reeves cut his hair. <laughs> yeah, like what the hell? Well, he's probably been filming Matrix Four. Yeah, true. Wait, that's a thing. Yeah, it's coming mm-hmm. out in like May. Wow, I didn't know that. Okay, <laughs> oh, now you know. Uh, yeah, best game be direction. Out. Oh. oh, go ahead, Jacob. Go ahead, talk about the say, Matrix. It's going to be out in like May or June uh, in theaters and on HBO Max. Huh. Interesting. But yeah, best game direction. We we touched on this one earlier. How it went to The Last of Us Part Two, which I don't agree with that decision, but whatever. Not at all. Not even remotely. Uh, next up, I wrote down ex- wrote down GTA Online trailer. I literally don't even care anymore at this point. Yeah, good. I'm glad. I- I'm glad someone shares that with me. I yeah. never cared in the first place. We don't. We Nor don't do I. GTA here. Yeah. Nor and then uh, Respawn made an Oculus game, Medal of Honor Above and Beyond, which is available now on Oculus. Which cool. nifty. Uh, and then Jacob, I know you were excited about this one. A trailer. As hell. Mass Effect will continue. Yes. Yeah. And it and that's Liara in it, and I am very excited. Well, also, uh, other reasons to be excited is that it shows two galaxies. One of them is Milky Way, and the other one is Andromeda. It has been confirmed. 
So this may be a sequel to both the original trilogy and Andromeda, or at Ooh, least touch crossover. on May- yeah. Maybe maybe PB and Liara will bang. I'm cool with that. <laughs> <laughs> they already did up in my movie theater. <laughs> Damn straight. <laughs> oh anyway, my god. Anyway, but, game of the yeah. you know. oh, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, we're still talking about the Mass Effect thing. So anyway, so yes, that is a dead Reaper in the background of it, and fans are tearing the whole thing apart. Like, we've pretty much already figured out that, yeah, there's a Salarian on her team, a Krogan. However, there is one other mystery member, and people can't figure out if it's a human or a Drell. Um, I forget what's the third God, possibility. if it's that would be so awesome. I want another Drell. The Drell are so Okay. The other the other possibility that people were throwing around was one of the species from the Andromeda games. Um, I forget which one. But yeah, so this could be <laughs> this could be really crazy. So I'm excited. And of course they didn't they didn't give a release date for it, but uh, I'm preemptively just gonna take off a week of work to play that whenever it comes out. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I will be dead to the world until I beat that game because that that will be a day one buy for me. See, There's like your games are day one buys for me, but fucking Mass Effect is even after they fucked up Andromeda, Andromeda as much as they did, it's still a day one buy. See, here's here's what I'm wondering about it uh, because remember back when they were like like when they were still talking about like a Mass Effect four, they were like, oh, well, hang on to your safe for Mass Effect three because it's going to affect it and stuff like that. <laughs> what if uh, they're still like they want you to play the remastered trilogy, which of course they do because that's money, but <laughs> that creates the save game that you can use for whatever this new game is, and it maybe it also pulls from whatever you did in Andromeda too. Oh, and that would like, be cool. I don't yeah, think that's going to happen, but that'd be cool. I'm wondering. Well, that's what I'm wondering if it's going to do, and I'm just I'm really hopeful. I fucking... like, and I'm just like Bioware. Don't do this to me. Uh, I'm excited. I'm Who's going to so be more excited. disappointed? The Dragon Age fans or the Mass Effect fans? Dragon Age. Yeah, Dragon Age. <laughs> I'm a fan of both, and I can already tell you, it's going to be fucking Dragon Age. Ah. <laughs> uh. Anyway, they wrapped it up. Game of the year, shockingly, I know, went to Last of Us Part Two. Uh, it's almost like they told us at the beginning that was going to happen. Yeah, the Last <laughs> of Us Awards 2020. Uh, more news, because there is more news from this week. A lot more Game Pass news. We mentioned some Game Pass news during the Video Game Awards. They came out and clarified some dates and added a bunch more games to Game Pass this month. Uh, available now is more cred, which is available on everything. Uh, nice. December 15th, we mentioned Skyrim is hitting Android and console. And then December 17th, there is a truckload. We've got Among Us hitting PC. Beholder. Com- of, of fucking course it comes to PC Game Pass after I bought it. Yeah. <laughs> I knew better. Beholder Complete Edition on Android and console. Code Vein on Android and console. The Dark Pictures Man of Medan on PC, Monster Train on console, Moto GP20 on everything, My Friend Pedro on Android, Neoverse on Android and console, and Wilmot's Warehouse on console and PC. Wait, did you say Monster Train? Yes. Yes. Oh, nice. I don't know how I missed that one. Yep. Nice. Monster Train was good. Yep, it's not all good news, though. There are some games leaving Game Pass on the 30th of December. We're only losing three games, but they're all massive heavy hitters with Uh Mortal Kombat X leaving console, Football Manager 2020 leaving PC, (laughs) and Farming Simulator 17 leaving console and PC, which obviously leaves the door open for a new Farming Sim game to join Game Pass. Not farming simulator 17 <laughs> yes sad but true uh halo hit. infinite <laughs> was given a broad fall 2021 release date by 343 industries mm-hmm. so uh, as much as i like halo i just i don't even care <laughs> I, I, I've, I've played all of them damn near if not absolutely all of them i could not give a fuck halo is one of those franchises where i'll play the shit out of it when it comes out 
mm-hmm. but I'll forget about it in the meantime. <laughs> yep. I don't forget about them. I'm just not fussed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I haven't. I honestly, I haven't touched one since ODST. Wow. I like, I Sorry. tried playing Reach. Um, that was my favorite I, one. The controls I thought were a little weird. Um, and weird. I just never finished it because there were other games out at the time. Um, Reach was yeah. my favorite. Then again, it was also I think my first. But oh, I fucking love Reach. Personally, Mostly I love. Personally, I loved ODST the most. I think that one's probably my second favorite. And it's like, all because I don't like Master Chief himself. And I, I know that's fondest, blasphemy, but... <laughs> no, I got you. I mean, like, I've got fondest memories of Halo 3 just because we used to play it all the time in college. But ODST, I thought, was far superior in terms mm-hmm. of story, gameplay, music, like literally everything. Um, yeah, it was just like, I'm glad that they made it. Uh, but yeah. Oof, this mic's harder lemonade has hit me off <laughs> harder than I thought it would. <laughs> well, no, quick, get to his reviews for he's drunk. <laughs> he is getting white girl wasted, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> My cheeks are hot. <laughs> uh, some game delays. Prince of Persia, the Sands of Time remake is getting bumped to March 18th, so happy birthday to me. Yeah, I had no idea that was supposed to come out so soon. And then when they were like, we're delaying it, and I was like, what? <laughs> Yeah, it's probably yeah. a good idea. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait for that Ubisoft, to Do you think Ubisoft bumped it after like the really crappy response to 13? I don't know. Because, I mean, that was a Ubisoft game way back in the day, wasn't it? 13? Yeah. I don't know, I but the new was. one had nothing to do with Ubisoft. Well, it was a remake of the first ga- of that game, though, wasn't it? Yeah. I don't know. I I, I really liked. I really liked it. I don't know why so many. Like I get why people were like, "Oh, I don't like the graphics," because the graphics were very different from how they originally were. But I still thought it was a really fun game. I don't know what the fuck everyone's problems were with it. I liked it. People are stupid. They don't like the things that I like. They suck. Okay. Other game that got delayed, unfortunately, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the game complete edition, is not making its holiday 2020 release, but it is coming out just around the corner on January 14th. Well, that's not too bad a pushback. Yeah, that's really not that bad. Like, that's whatever. But at the same time, it just makes quarter one 2021 uh, that much more expensive for me. <laughs> that's one of those where you gotta go did they delay it to get away from cyberpunk <laughs> I don't know It's something like that I'm guessing it's just they ran into the last minute bugs could be that's my guess uh, last bit of news I have is that GameStop has closed a whopping 462 y- stores this year so far and the total for the past two years is up to 783. Yeah, there's a reason I didn't know why they had that stop. many stores. <laughs> oh, I totally believe that they had that many. I mean, like, heck, they were opening them up. Like, my small ass town used to have two of them. Like, mine still know. has like three. Yeah, it's just like they're almost like subways. Like, I don't know why like they exist. Like, when they're you literally like just go to the other side of town. They're like blockbusters. I wish y'all they could see my blank expression whenever y'all call your town small. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at the gatekeeper over here. Ooh, your town's not small. <laughs> my town's small. <laughs> yeah. GameStop is like blockbuster. They overexpand and then they're destined to die off just the same. Yeah, I have been to GameStop only a few times recently since the, the whole storewide remodels. I don't like it at all. Like, they changed it from having all of their games out so you could see what they have to just having cards of, like, the top 100 games or so on the wall. Really? Yeah. I haven't gone to a GameStop since, like, 2008. Yeah, they just just have, like, (laughs) blank cases of the top so many games. And they'll have prices on it for new or used. It doesn't matter what they have in stock. Like they had cases for Puyo Puyo used, which it wasn't even out yet, but they had prices and stickers for it used. Like, why would that be on your wall? 
Like they, because they, if if they can convince you to buy it used, they want to. Because that no, they don't stuff. have it at all because the game wasn't out yet. But it was still taking up a space on their wall with a new and used price sticker. Oy vey. Yeah. Nothing GameStop does makes any sense and hasn't for years and years and years. Yeah, like they're like I, old senile people. I would <laughs> like going to GameStop and browsing their used games to see what, like maybe they had some kind of rarities lumped in with their used games. Or something you wouldn't find too often, like Unicorn Princess or... <laughs> yeah, when I used to go there in high school, I went there specifically because I knew I could find games I would have never heard of otherwise. Because you'd always find... I'd find dozens of games every time I went there, at least. Of like, I don't know what the fuck this is, but it looks fucking awesome. Then I'd buy it. No. So I don't like the new, the new GameStop look. I'm not a fan. <laughs> But yeah, From that's the news I've, I have. Anything anyone else want to talk about, or are we just diving into reviews? Uh, I can do. Lucky I'm a little drunk because no, I have no, I have no news. I know a little bit of news. <laughs> what do Shut you up, Bucky. Jake is drunk. Um, <laughs> everyone got really pissy with Cyberpunk because they had some bits that were very seizure triggering. Mm. Um, they they have put out a patch already to fix a lot of that to lessen the likelihood for people getting seizures. The only console it's not out for yet is the Xbox One. It's still going through the process that it has to go through to get certified. So and by the time this episode good. comes out, that'll probably be changed anyway. Maybe. Hopefully. I do wish so they had just opted full on to turn it off rather than just trying yeah. to dampen it down. Yeah. Like... That'd been nice, because I don't have anyone else to play those parts for me. <sighs> it's gonna be fun. Yeah, you'll be fine. I believe in you. I I believe in me too. That's why I've moved the weights <laughs> away from my chair so I don't fall and crack my head on them again. <laughs> it wasn't fun the last time I did it. I don't plan to do that again. <sighs> oh lord, Cole, any news from you? Nope. Uh, I do have news. Son oh, of God. a bitch. <laughs> I should have kept my mouth shut. I'm sorry, Cole. You should have, but you didn't. Uh, so Netflix is getting a Sonic the Hedgehog animated show in 2022, uh, which should line up nicely with the sequel that Paramount has officially greenlit. Hmm. Um, did we talk about X or uh, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate coming to iOS in 2021? Did we talk about that? No. Dude, you are here. <laughs> did we? <laughs> You'd like to think I was here, but I wasn't. <sighs> didn't they? Didn't they say they're trying to do some kind of cloud-based solution or like streaming yeah. solution? Since yeah, iOS wouldn't allow the app. So I, I don't even want to get into that until we know what the hell's going on with it. Okay, I mean that's fair. Um, and the only other bit of news I have is uh, Chuck Yeager passed away, which. Uh, if you played Flight Sims in the very early 90s, uh, his name was attached to two of the biggest ones. Um, I have fond memories of my dad failing at uh, Chuck Yeager's Advanced Flight Simulator because uh, he could never land the damn plane. Uh, <laughs> and he used to get really pissed with it. Uh, but can yeah. never land so, the planes. <laughs> so, well, he was also trying to do it on a keyboard, which I was just like, what? <laughs> Like even I was, I think I was like six at the time when he was playing it, and uh, Chuck would be there. He would be like, "I don't even know you." And my dad would be like, "Screw you, Chuck Yeager." <laughs> <laughs> right, the yeah, the, the one that. airport in this area is Yeager Airport. Hmm. Yeah, it's in West Virginia. I thought. Wait, I thought you were a small town. You you've got an airport. I just said it's in West Virginia. It's in the area. You can get there. <laughs> well, yeah, you can get anywhere, you know. <laughs> that doesn't count. All right, we're going to go to reviews before you two start killing each other. First game to talk about tonight is called Panzer Dragoon Remake, developed by Megapixel Studio, published by Forever Entertainment, released December 11th on Xbox One for $24.99. On a far lone planet, you encounter two dragons awakened from the ancient times, armed with a deadly gun from the past. In the guidance of your armored blue dragon, you must fulfill your destiny and keep the prototype dragon from reaching the tower or die trying. Jacob, tell us about Panzer Dragoon Remake. I'll be honest, I wish the game had told me that that was what the plot was, because that was some confusing crap. 
Um, <laughs> like, I had never played any of the games before this, which Joe was just like, wait, I gave you the code. I thought you played this stuff before. And I was like, nah, man, I just wanted to pick up. Uh, there's more Florida. than one? Yeah, there's like three of them. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. I thought there, there was, was just one and they were remaking, remaking it. No, there's no, Panzer there's Dragoon, still- there's Panzer Dragoon's Vi, there's Panzer Dragoon Saga, Panzer Dragoon Orda, and now Panzer Dragoon Remake, which is just a mm. remake of the original. Right. Okay. And I picked up Orda, uh, which I think Joe got confused by because he was like, why would Jacob pick this up if he hadn't played it before? But Because anyway, Jacob? Was, yeah, because Jacob. <laughs> Um, so anyways, uh, first off, I would like to say I did make this game significantly harder on myself because I didn't take time to read the instructions. Um, and initially I didn't realize that, uh, you've got two buttons that, you know what? I'm getting way ahead of myself. (laughs) Okay. Let me, let me take a sip and I'll restart. (laughs) Yeah. That sounds like the best idea for this situation. (laughs) All right. So, Panzer Dragoon Remake is, you know, obviously a remake of the classic Sega Saturn game. It's pretty much like an on-rail shooter, and you're flying on the back of this dragon, and uh, unlike most like on-rail shooters of the time, you actually have the ability to look front, sides, you know, left and right, and also back. Um, and this is where I actually made it harder for myself, because I couldn't figure out that you, you could actually... You had two buttons to turn, and so, like, I kept just turning myself left and trying to <laughs> aim at the enemies and stuff like that. And I had a real hard time making it past the fourth level. Because <laughs> um, I'll be honest, this game is, it puts up a pretty good challenge. Uh, there's lots of enemies, like, you have to fly around and, like, you have to duck underneath bridges and past doors and stuff like that. Um, but it's... You know, it's pretty fun, even though the game actually doesn't really tell you what its plot is. It's just like, you're like some like little hunter dude who's like, you know, he's doing his hunting thing. And then all of a sudden, like, there's this explosion and the blue dragon comes out and suddenly you're riding on the back of a blue dragon. But there's also this like lone, like temple looking thing out in the middle there that's just like speaking in this like weird robotic voice and it's like begin prototype five or something like that (laughs) and it's just like i don't know what is going on and like keep in mind i was playing this game sober too um (laughs) and it's just like the game just doesn't make any sense whatsoever and it's just like oh all right well i've reached this part and now i have to fight off against the boss i don't know what it is but it's like airships and other dragons and like other weird stuff. I, I don't know. Like it looks pretty cool. Like <laughs> I had a lot of fun. Um, but like part of the like part of what I thought was really nice is that as it turns out, uh, there was like a cheat menu in the game, which and this helped me out with the last couple of levels. Um, that if you input it, it actually lets you have like God mode and stuff like that. So you just you know your health doesn't go away. Um, and it turns out that it actually does not prevent you from getting the achievements. Ooh. So, yeah. So, hooray for that. Um, and then after you beat the game, you unlock, like, a shadow menu, which gives you more options of stuff. Um, and then, yeah. So, you just play it a bunch. And, like, there's only, like, seven levels. So, like, you know, yeah, if you're playing it on game, God, the, God, it, it is a short game. I, was, I love I was the Sega Saturn surprised. days. Yeah, well, I... The only Sega Saturn games I've ever played were the fighting games for it, like Last Bronx, Virtual On, Virtual Fighter, that kind of stuff. So, God, I love Virtual Fighter. Yeah, Virtual Fighter Two is pretty fucking balling. I love it. Although I'm, I'm honestly like, and this is gonna be like slightly unpopular opinion. I think Last Bronx uh, deserves more credit than it gets. Um, yeah, not enough people played that game, but it was pretty tits, and I really wish that they'd bring that to Xbox. Anywho, Panzer Dragoon, <laughs> Panzer Dragoon, uh, it's pretty fun. I mean, the graphics look, they look okay. I mean, you can tell it's obviously like a dated game, but you know, I had a lot of fun with it. I'd recommend it. So overall, 25 bucks, your verdict. Ooh, 25. Uh, yes. Did you not pay attention when I no, said the price no. at the beginning? No. No, I know that. I don't pay attention to the price at the beginning most of the time. I hate 
Good. I hate me too. <laughs> anyway, if you're not careful, this will turn into a, a very special episode of the podcast. <laughs> anyway, 25 bucks, I'll be honest, is a little steep for me for this, but I still recommend it. So, yes, go for it. I can agree with that. I I love Panzer Dragoon back on the Saturn. I I'm thrilled to see it back in HD. Uh it's nice to see it hitting more platforms too. Apparently, uh there's going to be some kind of special limited edition for PS4 and they're going to do a Sega Saturn reprint allegedly. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, I I got to keep my eyes peeled on that and see who's doing that when that's happening, but have they said if they're going to do a remake of uh, the second one? I don't know. I'm guessing if the game does well enough, we might see the other games happen. That would be cool. I just want to see Panzer Dragoon Saga remake happen. Please. Please, I want to play that game, and I don't want to have to drop $1,000. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, what? Panzer uh, Dragoon Saga is ridiculously expensive. Why? Because there's not many made. I mean, like, is it, like, the third entry in the series, or is it just, like, a combination of, like, the two? Like, what is it? It's a third entry, but it's an RPG on four discs. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Why, wait, why isn't there... But, aren't the rest of these, like, on-rail shooter kind yes. of things? But they made a third game that's an RPG. Yes. Which is why it's so awesome. <sighs> Deal with it. <laughs> anyway, next game to talk about is called Duck Life Adventure, developed by Wix Games, published by Mo Fun Zone, released December 4th on Xbox One for $7.99. Design your own duck and embark on an epic adventure. Explore an enormous new er- an enormous new area to find training dojo shops and ducks to race and battle. Play 16 new training games to level up your duck in eight skills and become the greatest duck adventurer ever. Jacob, tell us about Duck Life Adventure. I'll be honest, like this is a, this is kind of a weird game for me because it looks like what would be considered to be a very high end Newgrounds game from like 2006, 2007. Um, so pretty much, you like design your little duck, and like you can you can design like color and eyes and like what kind of beak it has and uh, its hairstyle and stuff like that. And then you go off into the world, and it's as the game says it was going to like you know that it would that it that it is going to be you know you, you drunk? Go off. yeah yes drunk. <laughs> <laughs> how many hard lemonades are you on by the way is this your first one no okay just making sure you're not that much of a lightweight however these are also pretty like these are uh how many ounces is this this is <laughs> this is <laughs> it's like these, <laughs> these are like 24 ounce cans <laughs> so, <laughs> those are some tall boys. <laughs> I was I was originally going to say tall boys, but I was like, wait, I don't know if that's the right you know word for that. Anyway, um, <laughs> and you've broken oh, it. All right. So anyway, so you're going through the, like the village and stuff like that, and you initially get, uh, you know, you get to, like some duck asks you like, oh, would you rather be an explorer or do you want to be a fighter? Uh, and so, like, you get to decide how, like, which path you're going to take initially. Although, you end up having to go back and do whichever side you didn't initially do. You have to do it later on, so it's like, whatever. And then you get to play a bunch of mini games that, you know, help build up your level. Um, and they'll build it up to, like, a certain size. And then they're like, oh, well, you need to go elsewhere, like, train harder for this thing. Blah, 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 blah. And during this, like, you can earn, like power-ups not they're not really power-ups but they like level you up more you can get coins you can get extra cosmetic stuff like you can find buy weapons and clothes and all this other kind of stuff and it's just (sighs) there's a decent amount of content to it and the whole time i was playing it i'm just like this is a pretty mediocre game although this would have been killer again on new grounds back in like 2007 2008 ish but as I'm like going, oh, this is mediocre. I couldn't stop playing it. Like it was oddly <laughs> addictive. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, like I don't know. Like it. Well, I, I know there's there's fun, mini games in there that you have to play to level up your duck. Uh, right. What What are some of the mini games that you can do? Like one of them was like you know you just have to keep climbing these ladders or jumping up as like lava like is below you. 
um, and like the volcano is rising and stuff like that, and you can't let it touch your butt. Um, the other one is like you swing across chasms and stuff like that, or you can compete in races against other people, or you can fight. Sorry, not people, they're ducks. Um, you know, you can compete against other ducks and, or you could race against other ducks and stuff like that. And then like, you're also given quests, you know, like, Oh, well, I need you to complete this map and you have to find all these little totems all over the place. And blah, blah, blah. and it's just, as I said, like the whole time I'm just sitting there like, Oh, this is pretty mediocre, but I couldn't stop. Like, and part of me is just like, Oh, after the review's done, I'm going to like delete it to clear off hard space. But I'm just like, I don't know. I kind of want to go back and play it. Like <laughs> <sighs> It's always good when a game gets you like that where it's it's nothing like super amazing but it's just good enough that it hooks you and doesn't let you go. Yeah. Like I I was I was surprised by it. Like it doesn't look like much but there's a decent amount of depth to it. I I will I will give it that and the gameplay is solid enough. Like, all right, all right, fuckers, you got me. <laughs> well, then for seven ninety nine, what is your verdict? Huh, that's cheaper than I thought it would be. Um, yeah, seven ninety nine. I mean, <sighs> personally, I'd rather tell people to try it, but for seven ninety nine, that's and with the amount of content that I know is in the game, I've, it's kind of like a fuck it. Yeah, why not, man? Right. Yeah, seven ninety nine. Go for it. Cool. All right. Well, that is it for you. Uh, we will let you go so you can get back to your drinking. Thank you. I'm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, I re- initially I was just like, oh, I'll have like one or two of these, and then I'm gonna go out to uh, you know, go out to sheets and get some food and do stuff afterwards. I ain't going to fucking anywhere. Nope. You're not driving now. <laughs> I nope. Absolutely not. So I get Uber Eats. Uh, I think it's too late for that. Yeah, in in my area, although some DoorDash does do some places like after midnight, but not many. But yeah, like my whole area closes down after like 9 p.m. for DoorDash and like uh, Grubhub and all that kind of shit. I had no idea. We don't have that shit here. <laughs> well, of course not. Like, you know, McDonald's. You don't you know, have electricity town, like, five there. Years ago. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> So, All right, Jacob, we'll let you get going. Do you have any final words? Nah, I wasted the belch earlier in my review. So, yeah, you know. Yep. <laughs> All right, take it All easy. Right. Bye. Full shame. <laughs> All right, next game is called John Wick Hex, developed by Biffle Games and Ant Workshop, published by Good Shepherd Entertainment, released December 4th on Xbox One, Switch, and Steam for nineteen ninety nine. previously available on PS4 and Epic. John Wick's John Wick Hex is a fast-paced action-oriented strategy game that makes you think and strike like John Wick, the professional hitman of the critically acclaimed film franchise. Aki, tell us about John Wick Hex. Okay, one, this game is a hell of a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. Because everything you saw in the trailers was time stops while you try to figure out what the fuck you're doing. And then every action you you do takes a certain amount of time, and it tells you how much. Enemies follow that same procedure. Uh, and you just go around shooting or taking people down in melee combat to get to the end of a section. And then it just immediately moves you to the next section of the level. Uh, there's usually, at least from the ones that I actually was able to finish, uh, there's like six or seven sections to each level. There's not a lot of levels, though. I think there was uh, the six or eight, something like that, levels, I, believe, I think, in total. But each, each level has a lot of different sections, and you have to play through all of them, obviously. Uh, you also keep whatever health you have, all the bullets you have remaining, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, between each of those sections. You get back to max in between every level. And basically, you just move around a handful of steps. Everything's in a hexagonal grid, and you just move around. You can hide behind trucks and walls and stuff like that. And then when people walk by you, you can knock the shit out of them, which is really fun until they realize you're there and then shoot the shit at you, which isn't as fun. Um you, you start off with a pistol that has 15 bullets and 
two clips, I think it was. Once it's out of bullets, you can't use it anymore for the rest of that level. You have to pick up one of the enemy's guns, and they only have however many bullets they haven't fired in their gun, which makes it kind of hard. Tactical. Uh, Yes, it's very tactical, but you kind of have to kill almost everyone on every level anyways because that's kind of just how you have to play it. Because to get from point A to point B, you have to go through most of them pretty readily. Um, And at the end, you get a rating, uh, which is a name uh, for lots of different stats if you beat the par for each one of them like in most of them uh using no health kits no bandages will get you one uh beating it under a par time and those par times are fucking ridiculously hard like i've seen people speed running this shit and they they just make it under par time it you have to play pretty much perfectly to get through that Damn. um how many weapons you pick up if you pick up too many of them to use, you don't get a name, which really sucks because there's a lot of enemies on every section. Um, so you kind of have to take them out melee if you want that one, which is not not easy. Uh, there's a few other ones, but those are the only ones I really remember. I think there's five total that you have to get under fa- under par under far. Boy, they. Um, and, and yeah, you're you're just trying to get to this guy named Hex who has kidnapped uh, the two people from the hotel that's in all the movies. The uh, head of – I think he's supposed to be the head of security and concierge dude, the black guy with glasses who's really awesome, as well as that uh, asshole who owns the place. Um, the, Hex has kidnapped them for some reason and has somehow – pissed off wick uh so wick is just trying to find the fucker and that's what all the levels are is just him getting closer and closer to taking out hex uh well what else do i have to say about the game other than it's really fucking hard (laughs) Um, like with all the time the time stopping and stuff i was like oh this isn't going to be too very hard i'll just take everyone out and won't even bother using the gun because aha no god no sometimes the game gets kind of confusing on when you can use certain abilities like the takedown you have to be right next to somebody to use it which makes sense because it's a hand combat thing but sometimes it just won't let you use it and i don't really understand why sometimes it lets you dodge bullets when you have uh, a certain when you have at least two pieces of focus, which you have a bunch of, it allows you to do takedowns and dodge bullets. But sometimes it won't let you dodge bullets, and I don't know why. And the game could just explain these abilities a bit better so you understand how exactly they work. Because it doesn't really make sense all the time. But on that, it was pretty fun i will never 100 percent this game because you have to get because as i said you you get that name you have to beat all of the objects at once in one game in order to get the name uh baba yaga which you need for achievements and i'm like i got three of them three out of the five for the first level and i got like one for the second level and i didn't get anything for the third level because i suck and yeah, so, I don't know how people are going to do this. It is so hard. So you're sucking aside 20 bucks on this one. What are you thinking of it? I, I think it's worth it. I think you'll definitely get the hours out of it. And it, it is a little fun uh, side game for the movies. It, it's it's pretty good. I enjoyed it. I, I haven't finished it because I suck, but I enjoy it anyways. <laughs> I'm so bad at it. Proud of you. <sighs> yeah. God. 
All right, next right. game is called Onoraya Crimes, developed by C. Colmos Game Studios, published by Badland Publishing, released December 3rd on Xbox One, Switch, PS4, and PC for $19.99. In a dreamlike future, Detective Santos and Torres will have to solve a series of mysterious murders, investigate and interrogate objects with their voice and personality in a point-and-a-click noir graphic adventure game. Can you find the culprit? Cole, tell us about this one. This is such an eye game. Like, I was so worried about coming on here and talking about this game tonight. And then, like, Jacob was drunk for all of his review, and I figured out that <laughs> nothing I could say was going to sound weird after that. So, <laughs> I'm doing That's fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be doing swell here now. Um, all of my <laughs> reviews are going to sound like I'm giving a, a pre-written speech. Uh, <laughs> so... You said, did you say Oniria? Is that how you pronounced it? I said Oniria, but I don't Onaria. know how. I've been pronouncing it Oniria. I Maybe? can't even remember I don't know. if they like say it in the game. Because my audio was, I have my, I was playing um, with it being streamed to the PC and my audio has been acting a little wonky. So it's on my end, not there. So I'm not sure if, it, if there was voice acting or not. Um, but there were subtitles, so I was fine. Um, this game is, is quirky <laughs> because it has that super adorable voxel art look which isn't my favorite i'll admit it but i will say they did a really good job with it um for for this game i'm just gonna say this game i'm not repeating it because i don't know if i'm pronouncing it right <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so they they did a really good job with the voxel art even if it's not my favorite art style i do think it adds like uh, an unusual juxtaposition that everything is like super cutesy and bright, but you're solving murders. <laughs> and not only are the murders themselves just, you know, ah, it's a body, it's a murder, right? But like the whole premise is that this all takes place in a dream world because we've somehow colonized dreams. People do fucked up things and we colonize the shit out of everything. So why not dreams, right? So we've colonized the dream world and there are murders and it's our job to, to figure these murders out. And at the crime scene, we <laughs> learn that every single item is alive. Everything. Mm -hmm. You can click on a chair and a chair will tell you what it saw the night of the murder. <laughs> you click on a picture on the wall, it'll tell you what it saw the night of the murder. You can click on a lamp, on the bed, on the rug, a book on the shelf. All of them will have something to say. Sometimes you will get to a crime scene and there will be a body. Sometimes there will not because the bodies in Dreamland just fucking disappear. Okay? And you may have to solve it without that little bit of information. I'll tell you what, it doesn't fucking matter if you have the info or not because it's all really hard. It it seems like such a simple point and click concept. You've literally got a whole room full of witnesses, right? Every single item in that room is your witness. You should not have any trouble figuring out who did it. It's not that easy. They're not always going to be like, um, oh yeah, the, the girlfriend did it with a knife, right? That's not going to be how they give you information. So, the picture frame might say, man, I haven't seen the girlfriend in two or three days. I wonder where she's at. But a hole in the wall might go, oh, yeah, I was made by a bullet from the pirate. <laughs> and then you're just going, who the fuck's the pirate? Where did the pirate come into play? <laughs> and then the chessboard's like, yeah, yeah, the pirate. We were playing chess the other night. And you're like, what? <laughs> so you have to sleuth through the information that all of these things give you. And sometimes it can be information overload to a point where you're just trying to really dig through. Now, the really important stuff that it gives you um, will go into your journal and your journal separates out. And like you, there's usually a couple of different potential suspects and you'll uncover more information about them the more you click around the room. And explore and get more information. Um, and then once you feel like you've talked to everybody, you've got everybody's point of view, you'll want to go through and choose a couple of statements that back up your opinion of whether or not each person that you're tracking information on is innocent or guilty. Um, 
the there is more though than just chatting with all the objects. There are also additional puzzles. You may need to crack a safe. You may need to open a puzzle box. Some of these are a little easier than others. Um, one of the first ones that you run into in like the tutorial, it just simply has you clicking at like a Rubik's cube type situation but it's almost like playing minesweeper whereas the colors get darker the more closer you get to the security <laughs> still a better review than jacobs <laughs> <laughs> the closer you get to the security cubes which if you hit the security cube will make you start all over right um yes so a place like minesweeper in, in that regard. Another one, though, I found was incredibly difficult was that you had a box with hidden switches. My biggest gripe about these puzzles that get tossed in like this is that they don't actually give you any kind of information on how to solve them. So you can just be sitting there spinning that motherfucking puzzle box for a good six hours trying to figure out how to do it. I exaggerated on that a little. But, <laughs> but you know, it's it's it can be frustrating when you don't actually have any information on, like, what kind of puzzle you're looking at or how. There is a hint icon, but I just feel like it would be better if it'd be like, yeah, here's the type of puzzle you have. Here's what we're looking for you to do. Rather than making you start over or stare without any progress for an extended period of time. Hold my hand just a little, okay? <laughs> um. But yeah, it's it's an odd, quirky little game. Looks adorable, but it's all about brutal, brutal murder and trying to solve it. There's a whole political thriller side to the narrative. I don't want to give away any spoilers, but it's just fucking crazy. <laughs> um, and I, I found it to be really impressive. And then for 20 bucks, what do you think? I, I think it's there. I think there's enough. Enough there to hold it up for 20 bucks. I'm good giving it a buy it. Cool. Yeah. Just hold my hand a little more is all I'm asking for. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how to say your goddamn name. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> all right. Next is Dark Complete Edition, developed by Unfold Games, published by Fear Demic, released December 4th on Xbox One and PS4 for $19.99. Dark will take you on a journey through Lloyd's dreams that quickly turn into a loop of nightmares. Open your mind and discover different perspectives into Lloyd's gloomy world. Cole, tell us about Dark Complete Edition. I'm jealous already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> Go talk on your phone. Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> was that my phone? Totally not my phone. That was jo Joe's phone. Yeah, Joe's phone. <clears throat> so offended then. <laughs> um, so yeah, Dark is the story of Lloyd, who is, has slipped into this dream world, which is less of a dream and more of a nightmare hellscape. <laughs> it's littered with um, puzzles and and a little bit of platforming, but more in like a a gravity defying kind of way. This is so fucking hard to explain. Holy shit! <laughs> so basically, um, Lloyd needs to to navigate the, these dream worlds. And doing so means that the player needs to like shift the world around so that he can reach certain areas to solve the puzzles in the way that he needs to. Um, I have one major gripe about this game that I'm just going to go ahead and get off my chest first and foremost. Okay. And that is that it is insanely bright and does not have enough contrast. It is in black and white, which is fine. Um, but it almost at times felt like it was blown out. Even when I went into the settings, you can turn the brightness down. You can't turn the contrast up. There is no contrast layer. It's just the brightness. So turning down the brightness only made like the darks darker and the lights a little bit darker. But it didn't actually add any contrast to them. And so it oftentimes it felt like a lot of things in the world that I needed to interact with for puzzles was kind of just being lost in the environment. If it weren't for the fact that it gives you a little hand icon, I would have missed 90% of the things I was supposed to interact with. <laughs> um, and that's kind of frustrating. Like, it wasn't even, it was just, I flat out couldn't see a lot of things. Um, I would like to have seen a, a more 
standardized brightness and contrast slider to make it a, a little more visible. I played it on both the PC and on the the TV just to make sure I wasn't like blowing it out of proportion for myself. And no, it's 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 a problem. Um, beyond that, though. Everything else played well. It it is kind of a slow game. I mean, you you take a place in this dude's nightmare. He's not running around. He's trying. There's there's stealth elements. You got to be kind of quiet about certain elements to it, um, certain puzzles, and and just get through it. Um, one thing is that it doesn't really. It, again, we we have another instance of where like it doesn't give you any kind of guide or information as to what you're trying to do, and you're having to like trial and error your way through it, which is fine. I want hand holding. <laughs> Tell me where to go. Um, most of the puzzles that I ran into were linear enough that I could figure it out eventually, especially. Um, when I had to like shift the world back and forth a few different times, though, that's when I started to get frustrated because it never was quite sure which side was up and which side was down half the time. Um, but, but other than that, I, it's, it's unique. It's, it's really well done. It's dark. It's surreal. I can see why it won all the awards that it's won, but it's kind of tough. <laughs> Well, overall, 20 bucks. What do you think of it? Man, it's a shorter game. However, the complete edition does include all the DLC. So I, th- I think at 20, $20, it can roll with it. Um, I do, like I said, I do wish it had more in the way of those sliders. I wish it was a little more helpful, but I don't think it's enough to like knock it down to a try it for it. Um, I think it, I think it can justify a buy it. Cool. Yeah. All right. Up next is El Hijo or El Hijo, a Wild West tale developed by Honig Studios and Quantum Frog, published by Handy Games, released December 3rd on PC and Stadia for $19.99. As a six-year-old, El Hijo must always sneak past the dangers of his world. As he overcomes his challenges, he gains self-confidence and cunning and with it more schemes to get past his foes. On his journey, he will find himself in a remote monastery, a harsh and unforgiving stretch of desert, and a frontier town rife with crime and villainy. Aki, tell us about this one. Okay. In El Hio, uh, you play as uh, both a child, uh, this obviously the six-year-old kid, and his mother on occasion. Uh, there, the father apparently was killed by some bandits or something, and while he and his mother were visiting the gra- his, his father's grave, they apparently decided, hey, we killed the man of the house. Why don't we burn the house now? <laughs> That's fun. So you come home a- and see the house burning and all the bandity assholes being bandity assholes. Uh, so your mom sends you off to a monastery. I- at least I think that's what it is. And then goes off on her own to uh, deal with some assholes. And that's where the story begins. The first, like, one-third, a little over one-third of the game is just uh, Heo trying to get the fuck out of the monastery. (laughs) Uh, Throughout each level, you're, you're just trying not to get caught by whoever the individuals in the levels are at the beginning. It's all the monks and priests and all that fun stuff. Um, in later la- levels, it's bandits and the like. Um, but you- you're just trying to get from point A to point B in the game while not getting caught. Um, there are a lot of checkpoints, so if you do get caught, eh, you're not going to lose too much time. But once you're caught, that character that caught you will be off time to how, like if they were walking back and forth in time with another character because they noticed you, they are not going to be walking at that same time because one character will have kept moving like they were supposed to while this one was running after you and catching you or trying to catch you if you get away, which isn't very likely and they'll go back to walking but it might be off time, which will make the game significantly fucking harder. Um, 
it's always better just to restart the entire fucking level if someone catches you. Uh, there's also an achievement for not getting caught on any level. Good luck with that. <laughs> it's a bitch. I've played levels for hours and levels. You can beat most of these levels in like five, ten minutes. Maybe I've spent hours on some of these just to get them done without getting caught. Um, you can also inspire children, which really is just like, hey, here's some rocks. Now you can, you know, juggle them. It is just getting the kids to have fun instead of being sad and just doing whatever work that they're actually supposed to be doing or interrupting uh, one per one kid's uh, school lessons. That was fun. Um, <laughs> and basically you're, you're just trying to avoid all these guys. You have a uh, pot you can hide in. You can hide behind things that are taller than you. Um, you can crouch behind stuff. You have lots of options. Eventually, you're even given, you know, rocks that you can throw to divert some of these people's attentions away from you because they'll go follow sounds. And sometimes you'll get toys that you can send out and stuff. It, it's just a cute little game where you're just trying to avoid getting caught and so you can get to the next part of the level. And this, when you play as the mother, you're it's the exact same thing, except for obviously you don't have the toys. Well, she might, but not those kinds. So most of that, you're just playing with a slingshot or throwing rocks. And that that's really all she has. Um, and yeah, usually you, you just play as her for like a level and then it goes right back to El Hia. Um And yeah, I, I really like it. It's really cute. Um, it's not super hard, but it can be difficult if you don't pay enough attention. So, yeah. So, overall, 20 bucks, your verdict? Fuck yeah. I I, told, I suggest this to everybody. I love this game. Well, I might have to give this one a go. It looks cute. Oh, yeah. It's real fun. I've been waiting for this for over a fucking year. Really? Yeah. It was announced a long time ago. <laughs> and I've, I've just been waiting for it and waiting for it and waiting for it. And it finally came out, and I'm happy. Was the wait worth it? Yes. Because it is just as fun as I thought it was going to be. Awesome. It's a bit harder, but just as fun. <laughs> All right. Well, next game is called Startup Panic Living the Dream, developed by Algo Rocks, published by Tiny Build, released December 3rd on Epic Game Store for $14.99. Quit your job and build an exciting startup. Survive the tech bubble, complete with rival CEOs, and expand your office from bedroom programmer up to the heights of global corporate sabotage, as long as you don't get hacked or kidnapped. Oh, we we already went over what happens when you get kidnapped and you sing a different tune than usual. <laughs> I didn't get kidnapped, but some of my employees did. <laughs> and then I had to decide if I wanted to pay to get them back or not. <laughs> I'm like, are you really worth three thousand dollars, dude? Like, no. How long have you been on the payroll? What are your stats? <laughs> Um, so Startup Panic is exactly my fucking kind of game <laughs> in that you are managing your own startup. Uh, surprise. <laughs> you literally start in your little bedroom with your one little computer and, and your bed is like on cinder blocks, just hoping to <laughs> keep you off the floor. Um, it's, it's, very realistic. You have a fishbowl. It's uh, a little bit depressing. <laughs> but as you start off, you can build your website. Everything that you do for your startup has um, metrics that you need to reach. And then you are given an overall score, which is um, via a rating system from your users as to how good or how shit your new features are. Um, so you'll start off with a landing page, right? Why are the cats being assholes? <laughs> um, you'll start off with a landing page. The landing page. I think the cats are making noise and she's muting yeah. herself. You that gotta let to that be... play when you... <laughs> <laughs> I don't like for them to be carrying on in the background like that. Um, 
I have some standards for the show. <laughs> Love you they may be. You're the only one who does. <laughs> but um, you start off with your landing page, and then you can build additional features, like users can sign up, or then you, they can have their own profile. They can actually see other people's profiles. Are you going to add the ability for them to add friends? Are you going to add a store where they can pay you money? <gasps> Got to monetize to um, make their profiles custom. A little mice facey, but you can get some money from that. And when you're just starting out, that's kind of important, right? As you build and you unlock features, your site gets a little bigger, your user base grows, you can finally upgrade your um your room and you are no longer stuck in a link <laughs> little rinky dink room. You can afford to rent an office space. Then you have a couple of employees at that point. The the bigger your office space, the more employees you can hire. And then um, the more that you can do additional contract jobs, it's always a good idea to like break up which employees are working on features and and which employees are doing contract jobs so that you always have money coming in. Because while you're while you're working on features, you're not generating revenue unless you already have revenue generating features, which can be a little hard to come by, especially when you're getting started. So it's very important to make people do slave labor for you. <laughs> Go over here, sit in the corner with the goldfish and program some apps and they'll make money. And then you can use that money to, to get the startup off the ground. You can train your employees. They'll have a couple of different areas, um, technology, usability, aesthetics, and marketing. But you can raise those stats up. Um, one thing you do have to monitor, though, is their motivation. Because the more they work without a break, the more they'll really start to hate you. <laughs> and the lower their motivation is, the less of a, the the less their work is going to be worth. And they're, they're not going to do as good of a job. And then you'll get a lower rating. And then you'll have to go back and redo that shit and try to get a better score. And all of that shit costs money. You don't want to deal with it. So the the best solution is make sure you have enough employees that you can keep them on a rotating schedule where you're sending some out on vacation. So that then when they're on vacation, they can't make you money and you have to pay for it. But at least they come back motivated and they do a better job. Also, they'll quit. If they get lose all their motivation, they'll be like, peace, bitches, I'm out. <laughs> You've got to monitor their salaries. You've got to monitor your marketing. You've got to actually research... And run promotional campaigns. You've got to decide if you're going to be a game dev studio. You've got to decide if you're going to be um, a YouTube equivalent. You Meanwhile, you've got controversial celebrities using your product. Are you <laughs> going to allow them to actually promote your product? Or, or, you know, it could turn out good or bad for you. You don't know. Uh, don't do it. <laughs> don't ever go with the controversial celebrity. It has never worked out for me. Um You'll have asshole investors who want to take over your company for chump change. And they will have you literally giving them a huge chunk of the of the company for just a little bit of money. And you've got to decide, am I going to take that money and maybe grow a little quicker? Or am I going to stick it out and go for it the hard way? Same with loans. Are you going to take that? I love that one of the biggest loans is like six hundred sixty-six thousand dollars, and the and the bank looks like uh, uh, the Church of Satan. <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, but you can take smaller loans, pay them off more quickly. My recommendation is just pretend loans don't exist because every time you think you're doing well, you go, "Son of a bitch, I got to pay a loan back," um, and that's just a bad idea. <laughs> um, there will be other events as well one that I continually fail is that a pop star wants to launch her new album on your platform and if you have your features below 7 points on the rating <laughs> you will fail your servers crash any feature that's below a 7 fail instant fail go back in time start all over again you got two choices, you know, back up a little bit or start all over. That's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy hard. Um, 
there is another another um, opportunity that pops up. It's one of the early ones, but I actually really like it because you're being guided in the game by a sentient paperclip assistant named James Snippy. It's Clippy. <laughs> I can tell. I can also tell that Staggerilla is an awesome person because they came in and dropped a hundred biddies. George, take it away. Drop it, bitch! Thank you, George. Very nice. Um, and thank so, yeah. you, Staggerilla, for the hundred biddies. Hey, Staggy. Nice to see you here. <laughs> so, yeah, we have um, oh, lost my train of thought. We were talking about Staggy dropping bits. Yeah, but before that, Oh, well, I don't remember. <laughs> wow, I'm so glad you pay attention to me. The game is great. How does I it feel? It, huh? But it's really hard. <laughs> 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 it is really difficult to actually play. Oh, we were talking about not Clippy. There's even like a Cortana reference, but he straight up says, oh, we shouldn't say that name. <laughs> they just get the C-O-R out. It was like, I got replaced by Cor- oh. Um, It's funny. I, I appreciate the sense of humor. Um. Yeah, it's a surprisingly difficult game. They definitely have some moments where you're just you're panicking proper. <laughs> um, I was I thought I was doing really well in the game, and then all of a sudden everything shits the bed. It was like this this employee has been kidnapped, and the bigger you get, the more <laughs> the more shit that can happen to you. Right? It's like your employee's been kidnapped, and you got your website got hacked, and now you're Ratings are down in the shitter and you better go fix it before you have to launch this platform. And you're just like, <gasps> Jesus fucking Christ, I'm never going to get anywhere. <laughs> and I'm only at like the, the second upgrade. And so there are, there are crazy huge setups if you can get to them. I can't. <laughs> I absolutely can't. But I'm going to keep trying because, whoa, am I addicted. Well, then as it stands for 15 bucks, what do you think of this one? Easy buy it. Easy. If you if you enjoy these kind of micromanagement simulator games, it's definitely something that you're going to enjoy. Uh, if not, I still think it's worth checking out. And, and maybe you'll find a new genre you like. Cool. All right. Well, next game is called Wonder Blade, developed by Puppet Depot Game Studio, published by East to West Games. Released December 3rd on Xbox One for $14.99. What do you get when you cross a whimsical adventure, humorous characters, and combat to die for? Wonder Blade, an awesome experience you won't soon forget. What are you waiting for? Grab that trusty weapon of yours, free the princess, and save the world all before breakfast. Our friend Serlina covered this one, wrote in a review, and this is what she's got to say. Greetings, SML friends and fam. It's your girl Serlina, and this week I'm reviewing Wonder Blade for the Xbox One, developed by Puppet Game. Puppet Depot Game Studio, and published by East to West Games, Wonder Blade is a hack-and-slash action-adventure game where you are a gallant knight who, while trying to prove his worth to marry the princess, must now go and save her from the usual kidnapping by the enigmatic baddie. Let's get on to the review. Now, if you're of a certain age, you may have a sneaking suspicion that you've played something like this before. Something about the art style, the gameplay, even the plot. Awfully familiar, yes? If you remember a little game from 2008, which was a lifetime or two ago... You may even think to yourself, wow, this game looks and feels a lot like Castle Crashers. You'd be right. In fact, it's almost fair to say that this game is a reskin of Castle Crashers. The similarities are so blatant. Then I started doing some research and I was like, oh, they're from China. They may not have had access to the original or maybe they want to pay tribute to an awesome game. Pretty much the whole game is a near carbon copy, but I'll continue with the review nonetheless. Despite everything, Wonder Blade is very fun to play. The action is fluid, the weapons are fun, and the combos are numerous. I managed to get up over a 200 streak of going, which felt great. There are a couple of gameplay quirks that I enjoyed. The first in this game, you can perform executions. When baddies get weak enough, if you press B, you can perform an execution on them, and they are pretty awesome to do. I can vouch for that. The executions were probably my favorite part of this game. <laughs> they are so adorable to just decapitate and destroy people anyway uh secondly every time you beat a level there's a challenge you can do the first challenge was to see how many barrels you could smash in a minute the second was a street fighter style car smashing game i found these challenges to be very fun uh the barrel one quick shout out to the game uh you needed 95 barrels to get an achievement i got 93 <laughs> Oof, that must yeah. have hurt feelings a little bit yeah that sucked <laughs> 
Anyway, there's, there's a couple of things I don't like besides the somewhat blatant copying. The action is fluid, but the controls aren't, specifically the rolling mechanic. Okay, so you're supposed to roll yourself or roll to set yourself up for longer, longer combos as well as avoid damage, right? Except the enemies always seem to hit me as I'm entering the roll or ending the roll, thus ending my combo streak. What's the point of a roll granting me the ability to not get hit if I constantly get hit while using it? Another point of contention is the written dialogue. As y'all know, I don't like typos or translation errors in games. I'll allow for one. After that, I got issues. If I found more than one, so it's irritating. Uh, the transfer, the translation from what I assume was Chinese to English is difficult, but not impossible for someone like me. It stings that no one went over the dialogue with a finer tooth comb. Another mild annoyance is that you earn different costumes that give you different stat effects, status effects. The problem is you have to go all the way back to the start menu of the game to change costumes. That was annoying and completely uncalled for. If I could swap my magic easily, I should be able to swap clothes. Uh, Wonder Blade is available right now on the Xbox One for $14.99, and should you buy this, I can't lie, this is probably the hardest review I've had thus far. I want to rip the developer a new one for being a near total and complete plagiarism of another game. However, at the same time, I recognize the previous game came out over 10 years ago, and there may have been some who never played it. Bearing all this in mind, I'm still going to give the game a try it. The price isn't too shabby, and it's a really fun game. If you miss Castle Crashers, then this is an introduction to an amazing experience. If you're an old head like me, you'll still have a good time, but you won't be able to stop comparing the two, which is kind of sad. Uh, I can agree. It is very, very, very much like Castle Crashers. Uh, even down to, like, remember the... the uh, lumberjack chase where the dude's chasing you and you're riding on an animal that's just shooting along. There was a chase sequence near exactly the same in this game. Wow. Yeah, it's it is <laughs> when I when I talk to her about the review, I'm like, it's very much like Castle Crashers, maybe a bit too much like Castle Crashers, <laughs> but it's fun. I, I had a good time with it and I I'd still give it a try at 15 bucks. I think it's cute. It's adorable. It's brutal. Uh, it's, it's a good time, even though it's really, really a lot like Castle Crashers. Yeah. Uh, anyway, next game is called IAI, developed by Satter Entertainment, published by Sometimes You, released December 9th on Xbox One, Switch, and PS4 for $9.99. IAI is a classic scrolling shooter with modern graphics. You, you are a self-aware AI that was created on a space military station developing weapons. Now your goal is to break out of the lab and conquer your freedom, but you will not be allowed to escape so easily. Make your way through an enemy army on the way to the Stargate. Oh, tell us about IAI. I had to stop for a second and think about which one of the shmups I played this week this one was. <laughs> um, they were both very similar, but also very different. So this was the one that um, I, I actually had. I might have enjoyed it in some ways. More than the other I'm going to talk about later, but also I had some issues with it. So it is a it is a vertical scrolling uh, shmup bullet hell, whichever one you want to refer to it as. They're kind of synonymous at this point these days. Um, you have your ship and, and it scrolls up and you shoot things as they come down. It's really pretty easy. I will give them huge bonus points for having an auto fire button. I think all shmups need that shit. I am very pro auto fire. <laughs> you can turn it off if you want to get the achievement for going through without shooting anything. That's all honky dory if that's what you want to do. I don't give a fuck. I just wanted to shoot everything. Um, and it makes it a lot easier if I don't have to sit and hold a button for four hours while I do it. <laughs> you <sighs> The one thing I want to go ahead and complain about and get it over with is um, the environments and the enemies that are presented on them. The environment is basically like a flat image that just scrolls along on the bottom and then the enemies are kind of feels almost like they're over top of it, right? And that's all well and good, except for the color palette that was chosen for enemies and the background are it's too similar. There's not enough to make the enemy stand out. And sometimes it can actually be really difficult to tell what you're actually being hit by or where you need to be shooting until they shoot at you specifically. Um, 
their bullets, thankfully, are, are bright enough and like distinct enough that you can tell where they are. That's great. And I appreciate that. But unless I see where the bullets came from, and remember, there is the bullet hell element. Unless I can specifically see where the bullets came from, I don't know where to shoot. <laughs> because a lot of times, a ship floating over can look like it's part of the background below it. And that's a bit of a problem. Um, especially when you get to when there are static enemies on the ships, like um, like the guns that are mounted, like turrets. That makes it a whole lot worse to to try to like pinpoint where they actually are because they all just kind of blend in. And you're like, is that something that's actually level enough for me to shoot, or is it something that's just kind of like in the distance? Um, I would have liked just a little more a little more separation between enemies and background. Would have gone a long way. That said, it was still completely playable. Um, I got a good kick out of myself for some fuckery because when I played, I looked at the achievement list and one of the achievements was fail three times on the same boss. <laughs> and I was like, ah, that's easy enough to just cheese. And then I was like, well, you know what? I'm just going to finish the game and then I'll cheese it after. Because I was playing on easy and I was using auto far fire. And, <laughs> and oh, wow. I let it go. Uh, <laughs> I, and I was like, okay, I'm tired. Um, you know, you it's, mean you're tired? I, I'm gonna, yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna do fine. I'm not gonna need to, to like worry about dying multiple times. Yeah, I was an idiot. And the, like the third boss is a skill check and he was just putting me in my place. <laughs> <laughs> You do collect chips as you're destroying enemies. Um, and then you can use those chips to upgrade. And it was really testing the limits of what I had upgraded. And I got the three deaths naturally. So at least I didn't have to go back and cheat that one. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. Yay. Proud of you too. <laughs> I like when I get achievements naturally. <laughs> Even if it's for failing. Um but yeah, it, it, the the boss skill checks are definitely a bit of a kick in the pants, and you're going to find yourself doing several levels over and over again to try to get enough chips so that you can upgrade. The, the unusual thing was one upgrade would usually be enough to push me through. Like, I would be like, oh, I have just enough to upgrade my rockets or my plasma gun. And then I would beat it that run. I didn't have to sit and grind over and over and over until I had multiple upgrades. Any one upgrade would be enough to tip me over to where I could beat it. Um, that's the glory of, of easy difficulty. And I have no shame about it whatsoever. <laughs> you have shame about anything, though, is the real question. Not much. Okay. <laughs> Not much in this world, no. Because um, what's the point? What's the point of being ashamed? Um, but yeah, I had a good time with it. I beat the whole game. I, I rolled through it in a night. It did take me considerably longer than I was expecting, primarily because of those skill check bosses that were really just setting me on my ass and would make me roll back and, and you know, do the level a couple of times until I had enough chips to get an upgrade. Um, biggest complaint other than the whole, like, thing with the graphics blending in is that the... I felt like on easy, the cost for the upgrades was a little too high. You get a shit ton of chips, but if you die, they take half of them away. And if you're getting two or three thousand chips in a level and you die, you actually only walk out with a thousand of them and an upgrade costs five thousand and you're left sitting there going, that's cool. <laughs> so you would have to, to grind a couple of times or go back to a level where you knew you could do it easily and actually get out with all of your your chips and not lose half of them. Um, if you are good enough to actually back up and get 100% of the enemies in a level, you would not only get all of your chips, but you would get a 50% bonus as well. Hmm. So that became the best way. Like I had two levels that I was really good where I could consistently get every enemy. 
And I would just go back and grind those <laughs> over <laughs> and over. And I'd be like, yep, mine something. Bye. And then I could go and beat it and carry on. Um, so I could appreciate that. <laughs> I wasn't upset about it at all. But I do wish in general just beating it would be enough to, to get you at least an upgrade as opposed to having to beat a level four or five times to get enough to do something decent yeah. with it. Um, but that was my only gripe besides the besides the visual differences between the characters or the enemies in the background. Otherwise, I thought it was a really solid schmup. Well, then for 10 bucks, what is your verdict? 10 bucks, I give it a buy it. It's, it's solid. It plays well. It does what it wants to do. If you are looking for various modes and shit, your SOL, it only has story. <laughs> but it's long enough to, for $10. It keeps you there. Cool. All right, one final game to talk about tonight is called Habroxia, developed by Lilimo Games, published by East Asia Soft, released December 2nd on Xbox One for $7.99. Blast your way through a myriad of extraterrestrial incursions in this arcade-style scrolling shooter. Highlight the ship Habroxia through 15 levels featuring intense boss fights, rescue missions, shifting perspectives, and untold surprises. Customize your ship to enhance your abilities, unlock the three endless side modes, and save the galaxy from a series of sinister invaders. Oh, what's the the big difference between this one and IAI? Oh, it's another shmup. <laughs> you know what we need, Joe? Huh. We need a recording of Chris when he goes into that spiel about what a shmup <laughs> is. For whenever I review a shmup, because I don't care to say it. <laughs> if you don't know what it is, Google it. It's what I had to do. <laughs> You'll learn it the hard way around these parts, kids. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, so yeah, uh, Habroxia, did I say that right? I think I did. We're going to pretend I did. Uh, is another shmup wherein uh, it's side scrolling. For the most part, there are a couple of instances where the level, interestingly enough, like shifts from side scrolling to vertical scrolling, and then will shift back, <laughs> um, which is which is pretty interesting. I was I thought that was cool how they implemented that in there. You don't have any control over when it happens; it's just part of being on the rails. Um, but it is it is nice. It's a nice change of pace because you're like up, down, up, down, shoot, 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 up, down, up, down, and then you're like, oh wait, yeah. Back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> so it, it lets you feel like you get to use your whole thumbstick. <laughs> um, the the biggest difference between um, this and IAI is that it does have additional modes. I said that IAI was just a story mode and that was it and it was done. Habroxia is like, no, look what all the cool shit you can do with a ship that flies and shoots things. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you have your main story mode, which is 15, excuse me, 15 levels, um, including two boss fights, I think it is. Is there a third? There's so many bosses at the end at almost every level anyway. So there's shit tons of bosses. There's enough to keep you busy. Um, but I think there's like two levels that are specifically just, hey, this is a boss, get fucked. Um, there is also the boss rush mode. There is a save the astronauts rescue mode where there are little astronauts just floating in bubbles in space and you gotta find them and you know collect them don't shoot them and kill them like I did a few times until I learned not to <laughs> um, and then there is a, a vertical invasion mode which has the enemies coming down from the top and you survive waves it's basically a alien invasion just in this game, which is really cool. At least there's a, a good variety of enemies. You do eventually have the bosses that come up to. I only survived, I think, to to um, wave 15, and I was like, fuck this, I'm out, because it gets hard, and there's an achievement for 13, and I didn't see any reason to go back and make myself suffer. <laughs> <laughs> Got my achievement, I'm gone. There is no auto-fire mode. That is a disappointment. I would like to have that back. <laughs> All smups should have auto fire. <laughs> um, give please make it easy for me. It does have difficulty. 
You can play it on easy. You can get a 1K on easy. I don't have any shame about that. We already discussed my levels of shame is very low. So <laughs> <laughs> we're not surprised there either. Um, yeah, it looks great. Definitely has that more retro vibe to it, whereas IAI was very modern looking and, and played very modern. Um, Habroxia is just like going all in on its retro uh, inspiration, and it, but it does it with enough modern quirks that that it's comfortable to play. I will say I do have one major gripe about the um, the power-ups. It's not overly clear how or why the power-ups work, and I found myself a lot just pushing the face buttons and hoping something happened and learning to accept it if it didn't. I beat a good majority of the game before I realized that I there were power-ups versus just passive ones because there are some passive ones and because it tells you so little about what you're picking up or what it does I was just like okay that's a power-up I picked it up let's hope it's working and <laughs> went on and then eventually I got to a point near the end where I was like holy fuck I've had like shields and shit this whole time and you know, the so main reason I figured any of that out was because there was an achievement for doing a shield maiden run where you survive for 180 seconds. Can I just tell you how hard I cried when I died at 179 seconds? <laughs> <laughs> David was watching me do it and he looked at the the screen after I wrecked at 179 seconds and he just put his arm around me and went, oh honey, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I just sat there with my shoulders slumped and my jaw dropped. I couldn't believe I did that shit. And I hit a wall. I had extra lives and everything, and I just hit a wall. And I was like, <laughs> I kamikaze for whatever reason. <laughs> How do you? Uh, 180 seconds. Fuck that. I'm out. <laughs> so proud of you. I did it again. I got the achievement. I ended up going for like 300 seconds just because I had something to prove at that point. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it, the only other issue that I had with the game is the same issue I have with IAI. But I think it's actually worse than Hubroxia because you don't get much coinage for beating a level. Like you may beat a level and only get two or 300 um, credits and then when you go to the shop to buy upgrades those credits cost five and six hundred for for the for like an, a rocket upgrade and there's an achievement for maxing them all nice so but you're gonna do that really quickly fuck it did take some time and a little bit of skill i mean some of the bosses were were genuinely difficult but yeah, it it was doable. I completed it. If I did it, anybody can. <laughs> <laughs> My willingness and and uh, motivation to grind out a lengthy achievement process these days is very low. <laughs> if I can't do it in fifteen minutes, it's too much. But wow. um, no, Habroxia was plenty easy enough that that I was able to roll through it, and it was fine. So I had a good time with it. Well, then overall, eight bucks your verdict. Can I give it a buy it and I, I buy it and just be like, buy all the shmups, have all the fun, shoot yeah, shit, might as well. enjoy, do it, just buy them all. I like shmups. <laughs> all right. Well, that is it for this episode. Uh, hey. Made it through another one. Uh, thanks to, to everyone for being here and keeping me company. And I guess we'll thank Jacob, too, since he was here. No. I mean, it'd be nice yeah. to. Can we thank the Mike's Hard Lemonade? Yes. Let's thank I'm thankful for Mike's <laughs> hard lemonade inebriating Jacob so that he was white girl wasted and therefore my reviews sounded better in comparison. I mean, your reviews had to be better than oh, this game was hard and I sucked at it and oh, this game was hard, I sucked at it. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, yeah, anyone have <laughs> Anyone have any final words to end the show? Besides Jacob I, sucks. I like rallies. I ate rallies and I need to take a piss. The end. <laughs>